All right, people. All right. Inna alhamdulillahi wa kafa. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-mustafa. Wa ala ibadi al-ladhi nartada. Wa man bihudahum ihtada. Wa bi athari ahli al-madina taqtafa. Wa ba'ad. Fa salamu allahi ala al-qawm. Ahlan wa sahlan bikum. Wa marhaban, people. All right. It's going down. It's going down, people. Another episode of Mind Trap. Right now, just before we begin, I'm just going to do a quick sound check. Don't want the audio to be interrupted. All right. So let me just check with Facebook. What's going on, people? Clear, you're doing it as always. All right. So I'll just do a quick henna. All right. It's been a while. It has been a while, people. This is why I is here. All right. With an awesome, awesome episode for you tonight. Right. So let me just check. Uh, ch- let me check with mi gente on YouTube. Is the sound coming through fine, loud and crystal clear, people? Crystal clear. Somebody said, Mufti, no shave. Exactly. You know, you got you to gotta keep people guessing. You got to keep the game guessing, people. <laughs> <laughs> unpredictable all right so yeah you gotta go with the rough look sometimes you know what i'm saying <laughs> sound is great shukran shukran hina as always much appreciated right shera put says all right kita. all right kita to you as well right let me just bring up a profile picture people um we have right before the screen that you can see i'm just Bringing up there today's guest, Dr. Maruf Shah, an amazing, incredible mind, hailing from Kashmir uh, in India, somebody with a plethora of um, intricate and re- just amazing research on comparative religious literature, on Islamic philosophy, on things, on very difficult topics like things like so. Uh, salvation, salvific kind of uh, exclusivity, and we'll we'll take a look at that and a lot more, inshallah. But uh, first and foremost, let me bring on the man, the myth, Doctor Maruf Shah. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. All right, shukran. Uh, Dr. Saab, for joining us tonight, for taking your time out. I do know it's been very difficult, really, uh, just due to other issues, ex- extending s- circumstances to really make this happen. So I'm really glad <laughs> we've connected tonight. So it is always a pleasure and a joy to, in a way, enter into dialogue with anyone. Allah. Because deep down, you know, the other is God or from God, if you want to be more. Precise. So, whenever we see the other and enter into any dialogue or any communication, it is a part of Marifa. If we could really go deep into that, that's what Plato was up to. That is what Kierkegaard called that we need to listen. Okay. To the other. Wow. Yes. Straight in, straight so, in, Professor. I, I and love and it. Sufism is deeply, fundamentally attuning to the divine sound. Well, you you just listen. Wow. What is there? What is there? Speaking. So, if 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 we could just try to be more serious about how to how to listen to the other people, I yeah. think half of the people's problems will go. Wow. This world's problems will go. Very well said, Doctor uh, Maruf. Just a few words um, about your 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 kind of. Your, your your backstory, your backdrop to you to your journey for people who ain't familiar with you. Uh, a bit about yourself. We know you you know born raised in uh, Kashmir in India. You've got a background, an incredible background in all these studies. What wh- where were some of these studies conducted? Um, just for people yeah. to kind of benefit I, from. That. Yes, I did my. Graduation in veterinary science. Okay, veterinary science. Then meanwhile, I had been uh, yes, the, but I had already been pursuing independent academic journey, 
literary journey. I have been writing certain things. I have been contributing to columns of late for a few years to some newspapers, and I have been meanwhile pursuing studies in philosophy and then literature. I did PhD in from Hyderabad on the problem of absurdity in literature. And meanwhile, religion, you know it is in our veins. One always tries to think about it, tries to engage with it, tries to practice it if one could. So the, somehow my interest was on the interface of religion, mysticism, poetry, and what we call philosophy. So Iqbal Nikabi, this point has been raised that there are four paths to the ultimate. Four paths. Okay. Four paths to the ultimate. Poetry, philosophy, religion, mysticism. Wow. I'm loving them all. Ha, ha, ab in all four paths ka jo interface, usme mujhe interest thi. Wow. So I have been always trying to seek where ultimately this, the drama of life, meaning, hope, death, and all that, they get their origin, their foundations, and then try to move ahead. So, you know, wonder is central to philosophy, and it is central to science, and it is central to poetry yeah. as well. So that connects that connects us to the, I think, all civilizational paradigms. Somehow I had this interest in understanding the other. So I think literature, meanwhile, philosophy, meanwhile, I had been doing science, what we call this veterinary science. And that's why I, my first book was on Muslim modernism and the problem of modern science, in, yeah. which I tried, in which I tried to question certain reading assumptions regarding reading of science and their appropriation in what we call Islam mein pehli tha or Islam ki compatibility. Yeah, and so, just just to just to for the viewers uh, that ain't familiar, that doc, Doctor Saab, somebody asked what what is Saab? Saab is just a a term of respect, uh, I suppose, perhaps equivalent to sir, but uh, used a lot more comfortably in Urdu. Uh, you know, Doctor Maruf has several books uh, dating back from two thousand eight, postmodernism, postmodernism, language and literature. Uh, oh, oh. You... These are book chapters. These are book chapters. Oh, these are the chapters, right? Because yeah, these were uh, some of them that I was taking a look at. You had Islam and science, um, historic and contemporary issues, uh, Islam and science again, Iqbal's appropriation um, of modern science vis a vis religion, a critical appraisal. Um, there's the unrepresentable that shows forth. Is this wow? Okay, and society representation, textuality, and um, yeah, Islam and the and theodicy. This has also been another key area of interest for you. Uh, we can maybe take a look at that a little later on. Approach to evil. What you know, this whole thing, theodicy, the problem of evil, uh, with a compassionate God, how that works. So these are just some. Uh, of the things, but uh, you've also written on Allama Iqbal and you've mentioned how he's been a key inspiration. Out of curiosity, why uh, Allama Iqbal? I think Allama Iqbal was all, I, the, the way I introduced this, the human quest and these four departments, these four aspects of reality, which in a way in which we are interested or we should be interested or people have been interested to approach the ultimate. Iqbal was also interested in all the four. Mm. And secondly, I think the most profound philosophical uh, explication of Islam in the 20th century that simultaneously engages with the modernity, that is in Iqbal. And more importantly, Iqbal's poetry, that, interest, that interests me more. And I, and, and I think that needs to be better studied, that has been subject to several studies, but I don't think it has been so well known because later Iqbal is in a way appropriation of Ibn Arabi and Mansur al-Hallaj. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, it's larger Islamic intellectual and mystical Osara tradition. Iqbal is a very big expression. Hai. To, one of my friends had lastly remarked, if people had been introduced to Islam through Iqbal, there would not have been 
such cataclysm can add such other problematic things that we find in 20th century islam for example where the political has been at the at the center stage and there have been what have been called the fundamentalisms and there have been atavistic reactions towards in response to modernity so i think iqbal is ali shariati had said about him he is ali gune unfragmented man ali like okay i think i think that that has been the greatest epithet that could be devoted to any great mind so iqbal we have taken him as a i mean both as a poet as a philosopher and as what we call mystical thinker in in fact that is what our tradition is in which all these paths simultaneously find place so iqbal when you read iqbal you read almost everything under the sun okay do you feel you are, that you are, yes. poetry this is a a pathway to 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 the divine and if so is it uh aptly represented then within religion because within islam specifically yeah it is represented in fact major companions have been great poets sahib e deewan poets if you can count till deoband and bareilly in indian subcontinent jo bhi major ulama major ulama have been poets so my point is from the age of companions till date in our seminaries the poetry tradition has survived and it has been in a way uh, robustly cultivated and you know the complex question of poetry and prophecy that binary but people if you just penetrate a bit a bit uh, deeper into the discourse we find generally all the scriptures have been coached in have been put in poetic language yeah and you know great great mystic poets have in islamic tradition they were poets and if ananda kumar sami who has been such a great influence on the 20th century traditionalist thought who is that sorry he has he ha ananda ananda kumar swami that okay. sri lankan okay metaphysician he has argued this point and it has been elsewhere argued as well that our primary speech is poetry modern this originally primordial man spoke poetry only prose is a later decadence okay. so that is why poetry poetry if and if you penetrate to the in, in into the musical universe of the quran yeah so it looks it's it sings like poetry yeah exactly but though we cannot though we cannot classify it as poetry yeah. because poetry has other associations in the history especially in the arab hmm. context but the point is prophet has categorically prophet sosam is categorically told in the minashira hikma yeah and the connection between sagehood or hikma and poetry has been emphasized throughout in islamic tradition so our aaj bhi koi bhi sarman will not in a way move people unless it is in a way it appropriates poetry you know? so i mean yeah poetry is everywhere in the islamic world you know i I've argued as well I'm in line with the theory that and I feel it's a compelling theory that the Arabic language fusha it began with uh, with poetry with this kind of uh, uh, what was like a trance like state that almost these shaman like figures who were these mystic yeah. kind of wanderers would get into and hence it was to and what they would do they would speak almost in tongues and say these words that would rhyme and this would enchant people and this was uh, this is why it comes from shu'ur like sha'ir and you see it was these shamans uh in the quran when because some of what they were saying was um a bit weird and they were the ones that allah was referring to that you know that the shu'ara yattabi'u al-ghawun not the poets not just poetry what like today we As call such, it shayri fact yes hmm. you rightly pointed out shayri share is share is this shur share consciousness knowledge yeah. they have similar they have the so same poetry roots could, yeah ha poetry could in no way be in a way exiled from 
any traditional civilization, any scripture, any this. So poetry has been hailed throughout Islamic tradition. Prophet didn't quote much poetry. He used to sometimes quote a half as verse or certain something like that. But the point is, what is poetry? Yeah. <laughs> For first, we need to slightly uh, and what the ontology of poetry and the metaphysics of poetry. Sure. In fact, we, we call meditative thinking is poetry. When you, when when you when there is a conceptual thinking and there is a meditative thinking, non-conceptual thinking. The non-conceptual thinking is poetry. So my point is, whenever you are being attuned to the higher world, or attuned to your own deaths, one's own deaths, that silently, meditatively, poetry is born. So poetry is that 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 life of imagination. That imagination, you know, this is what is what connects the sensual and the intellectual world. I mean, akhira, yeah. jo, what we call barzakh. The barzakh, the realities of the barzakh are captured in the in through imagination, yeah. and poetry in a way is this uses this imagination to access the higher world. So poets, that's why they have been called Tilmizur Rahman, Talamizur Rahman, the students of God. Mm, so so from 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 Plato till date, the major thinkers have been. Poets. You cannot name a major. I don't think you can name any major Muslim thinker who was not deeply into poetry. Though himself he may not have been a poet, but you can great medieval figures. You just note. So poetry has been in a way one of the central facets of their work. And so I have found, um, Dr. Maruf, that. You see, often, especially in, um, and I think this is it's not just restricted to Urdu, but it's in many poetry, but especially we do see in Urdu as well, that in poetry, there's a lot of, um, that people have a lot of courage to question things, to be very critical. Like they will, for example, almost satirize the wa'id, the preacher. Mm. They will say, you know, yeah, just like it. You know, like they, they ask questions, you know, like this, they're trying to show that look like, hmm, like, what is this reasoning and what is this? Uh, yes. But that's just, I mean, a petty example, but they question on many things. Uh, yes. I feel it's a voice of expression for where people feel that that nobody can tell me off. Like if they just wrote a newspaper saying something like you know like the person says you know um uh, what is it things like sheikh ko jannat milegi hame dozakh ata karna or something like this like give me hell and they they give all yeah, these expressions yeah, yeah. like if a person wrote that everybody would just be like kafir 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 but when they say it in poetry there's like a license to get away with it yes 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 in yeah. fact it has been well remarked that the best intellectual uh, contributions of Islamic civilization, I mean the mainstream philosophy that has been appropriated by poetry. Mm -hmm. So Muslim philosophers, especially those who had what we can call more critical understanding of certain reigning ideological framings and other things, they took recourse to poetry. But, and poetry helps you directly reach to the divine. So Poet didn't feel the need of other structures as such. So he was confident that of his calling. See, I have told you that when Heidegger was is considered one of the greatest 20th century philosophers, mm. he said the job of a philosopher is to explain a poet. And poet shows the path of the figure to gods or the path to the holy, especially in the postmodern setting where traditional picture of God has been discredited for so many people and we are in a so secular age that the poetry is said to be the portal to transcendence, the portal to sacred. Wow. And this is Heidegger. And this is Heidegger saying. This is Heidegger. This is Heidegger. And then we see poetry as salvific. Wow. See, poetry has been in a way conduit to or it has been in help to achieving salvation. So, in fact, what is salvation? Salvation wow. is, uh, what is Islam? Mm -hmm. It is attitude of surrender. When we surrender self-will. And when and that is attuning to the higher world, 
that is po- that is becoming a poet who is a poet poet is one who is not himself who is not caught in, in that image of ego and identifying with it mm-hmm. for eliot is a famous critic he is fam- famously defined poetry as eliot escape from personality yeah. eliot escape from personality that has been the islamic understanding as well to be a true to be truly a poet you have to escape the trappings of the self and in fact that is precisely what islam wants islam wants to surrender of the self and when it when it reaches perfection we get ihsan and ihsan has been defined as cultivating beauty or doing everything in a style mm-hmm. what is poetry it is doing language it is the hadith in a style. mentions that that ihsan fi kulli shay it's in everything even when one of you folds his garments his clothing there is an ihsan to it that as in there's an order exactly exactly yeah. my 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 point is what is why is sufism the way we try to define it it is irrefutable because it's, it is fundamentally self avowedly oriented towards cultivating ihsan now ihsan is cultivation of beauty now beauty is everywhere and we are all in a way summoned to beauty unconsciously or consciously we are all attracted to beauty and wow. beauty is the name of the divine beauty is allahu jamilun wa yuhibbul jamal wow, wow. Uh, uh, yes so my point so my point is attraction to beauty is one of the ways god saves people devoting ourselves to beauty to is worship <laughs> yeah so god attracts people so 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 plato used to say that god captures most people through the net of beauty so my point is wow, and this is so central to the sufi understanding sufi metaphysics of beauty so now poets are the in a way they are the priests of beauty so if we are able to cultivate beauty in our houses in our domestic surroundings in our cities in every sphere of life in or in the very trivial things we do that is that is be, be, being a sufi that is a cult, that is being truly a muslim who is filth muhsin i mean mm. so the, this is the deepest root the, the deepest ground of sufism if we could properly put in understanding th- this kind of just being vulnerable to the beauty the the, the divine beauty that manifests yes, yes. itself yes yes yes, yes, mm. yes yes and the poets are able to see beauty everywhere bah wow. that that in is fact, something that, so well said <laughs> ha, in, fact, in fact you know ibn arabi was asked about this well, how do you say this everything is divine and this oneness of god and all that Yeah. one is a being and wahdatul mm, wujud and the whole mm. what is what is your opinion about this mm, what we call this bolo baraz bolo baraz Bo, oh, bolo baraz this what what I is bolo, what is bolo baraz uh, uh, when call of the nature oh. happens acha 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 main hum samjhe koi gehri mustalah hogi <laughs> I thought this is some <laughs> deep level nomenclature. Uh, oh, okay, like so, r- relieving so, oneself. So, <laughs> and he replied, he has never seen it. He's never seen what? So the point. He's never seen any defecation so, or. Uh, feces, when feces, he has never seen it. So the uska point ek hai ki as being it is also beautiful. Ghazali ka bhi ek mashhoor point hai ki jo bichu hai mm-hmm. and the, the scorpion, the scorpion, the scorpion is is as an angel in it is by being. is as holy as an angel wow. by virtue of parts parts fitting in the divine being because as a being it is beautiful as a being everything is holy as a being everything is sacred so poets are ultimately they they, they try to capture this being in the in words wow. they try to attune to this being in expression so that is in, why, in, yeah. and and you see this is from the in a sense ar rahman that khalaq khalaq al insan allamahu al bayan the capacity yeah. to express it's 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 a, yes. it's a miracle yeah people have not given much attention to the problem what we call language as the house of being how does god express himself well, primarily through language hmm and then it means being is in a way both veiled and unveiled through language so if you try So Jawamil Kalim, why is it called the Prophet of Islam? So, it is a deep Kalim. metaphysical. Ha, it has a deeply metaphysical meaning. So to, to, to gather the words is to attune to the divine. So those who have been able to master the words, those who have been able to master the words, they are in a they are in a way nearer to the divine. 
So my point is... And it's language... interesting that Kalam ha- shares its roots with to wound in Arabic as well, isn't it? That there's this... the that it's, it's interesting because in a way the words are so powerful that they can almost slice away. I mean, that's, uh, that's what you're kind of doing. You're kind of like slicing reality for the person in a way but or, or they can equally be wounding the person <laughs> yes yes right. it is from kalima kalima means zakham. yeah exactly wow. to wound yeah 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 huh? uh, and but the ta- but the poet's task is ultimately to, to reach the silence that was uttered by this wow, speech the primordial silence that was before the word so the bible in the beginning was the word yeah but but the silence thi na the silence preceded silence. the word <laughs> i yeah. never thought of that i never ever thought of that <laughs> in the beginning there was the word but what precedes it is yeah. silence but <laughs> but you see the beauty of silence can it be expressed except in words what well, one has to <laughs> now, for example it has been said that the highest form of poetry is music and the greatest music is which is without words so point, the point and since the language of being is silent the language of being is without words so our our approach should be to use words deconstructively and to reach the being and we do not need, need words ultimately that's why rumi would say a khuda binuma ja ara maqam andra be haraf me ruyat kalam god transport me to a state where speech comes without words ye rumi kehte hain So my point is, if we, the Sufis, the mystics, the poets, they have been trying to access a realm where speech comes without words, where we just feel the being, yeah, feel the beauty. Of it's interesting it. because and, now science is and it had that constitutes salvation or a preview of salvation is here in this world. Wow. For example, in Indian tradition, we call drama is this literature, this poetry is called fifth Veda. or the veda for the laity fifth. i mean scripture for the commoners fifth. because through, through fifth veda, veda. we going to the vedas veda. the, the, the four, the four vedas, four vedas they are for, yeah but there is called this is called fifth veda because this is a universal medium of what we call universalizing consciousness so if if you want a trip into heaven mm-hmm. for a commoner it, it cannot be done in a sermon or a ritual like that but if you give him or uh, if you give him a performance of a very good drama he is transported into the higher world watching a greek tragedy or watching a classic work of art one is transported into the higher world and in a way transported to heaven in fact where do poets get their images from mm. from the heaven william blake was a great romantic poet William blake. he defined imagination as god mm. imagination is yeah. god and the Amazing. in fact plato is also in, yes from plato to black we see a fundamental point that poets need to imagine to travel to the heaven then they visit back to the earth and that is what explains their perennial value and fascination for everyone so aap kabhi bhi kabhi nahi kahenge ki ki kafir poetry hai kafir ek spiritual belief ke context mein samajh aata hai lekin poetry ka koi kafir ab tak beauty ka koi kafir ab tak nahi hua hai that's why poetry this beauty is the most universal of media देखो रिलीजन भी एक लेवल पर रिलेटिव है मेटाफिजिक्स एक एब्सोल्यूट है लेकिन दैट इज फॉर द वेरी वन कुड आर्ग्यू डॉक्टर दैट इज नॉट ब्यूटी इन द आई ऑफ द बिहोल्डर इज इट नॉट सब्जेक्टिव आई थिंक दैट हैज बीन मच डिबेटेड बट डीप डीप डाउन जब सब्जेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट डिवीजन खत्म हो जाता है देन ब्यूटी इज बोर्न इन ट्रेडिशनल ईस्टर्न अंडरस्टैंडिंग इन इस्लाम इस्लामिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग it is only possible that beauty will be born or you do, or you access the divine when subject and object duality ceases so beauty is in that ceasing and when the so object that, subject cease to be separate beings exactly one that is what is mystical experience being. as well uh, in poetic <laughs> experience there is no longer a separate subject who watches an object they are one they are one and this is true about the mystical experience as well that's why it, it has been said that the aesthetic and the mystical they are fundamentally united ab ye in me thoda severe and they had a very difficult tension in modernity that is why modernity has been so ugly as well hmm. so beauty was the beauty was primary in a way category in 
traditional cultures but the modernity has been dubbed as the most ugly in that sense that beauty is not at the center utility just, is just at the to, center here oh not right beauty. okay cuz i was just going to ask you to just slightly unpack that when you say modernity is ugly uh what do you mean you mean that beauty I mean, ugly ugly yes i not modernity as such is ugly my point is it it was only possible in the modern culture that people could tolerate so much ugliness hmm. in the name of utility utility so, so all of a sudden the shift has gone from appreciation of uh almost an aesthetic appreciation to utility yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. benefit how do i benefit basically uh, that has been a second fall of man that beauty was no longer at the center aap dekhiye traditional kashmiri culture agar aap dekhenge mm-hmm. crafts kitne beautiful so beautiful crafts so design was on not only on the carpets it was also on the jo hum chai chai ki pyala jisme hum chai peete hain glasses on every little or trivial thing it, it was and it was with the with the, the very soul of the craftsman as was in his work and craftsman was fundamentally patronized by a certain master but ultimately his inspiration was to work for beauty and beauty's sake alone jo paise aate the hadiye aate the ya jo bhi uske sath that was not primary to it this so my is the point craftsman is the craftsman working away at his craft I mean, wherever there have been crafts beauty has been at the center and crafts have been a way of worshiping god in traditional mm, cultures i see this this people have forgotten this people have forgotten so beauty has been that yes. i was going to say you said uh, this was the second fall from grace it got me curious what's mm-hmm. the first fall <laughs> i for first first fall of man we all we all know adam's fall oh right the okay, modernity okay. the the modernity has been maha maha chale gaya aap adam alay salam okay i see so this is the first so you feel it's the first time uh that you know mankind has kind of moved away from yeah. beauty hmm yeah, yeah is it yeah, yeah. is it because was it a necessary developmental stage to uh capitalism required it uh, capitalism required it it sacrificed everything for profit and this so called functionality and utility and all these are not compatible with beauty because beauty can be extremely expensive mm. at times so why are islamic <laughs> why is islamic architecture such a beauty or in fact other traditional architectures modern man cannot imagine to build another taj mahal or another alhambra or masjid mosque of cordova so ab wo kahan se banenge because the very sensibility has gone that focus has gone today we are paid for these works mm. and it is not god who is at jo baat dil se nikalti hai dil par asar rakhti hai traditionally the words of jo great institutions the na they they would only sing when they they when they pleased mm. to sing the divine so usme jo the one is most productive or one of the best one is most creative when one is fundamentally doing the thing not for the self but for the other or for god so but the modernity may self is at the center individualism is at is at the center it is and this partly has helps explain that beauty is not at the center because beauty is only born when the self or the ego is dropped see just to be clear when we say beauty obviously and and realigning the center uh to be beauty many people will understand obviously one of i suppose for men one of the 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 greatest manifestations of beauty is women is this what you're referring to you're referring to something much greater than just the beauty of i am referring to that as well, as well. ibn arabi was obviously the divine the manifestation the ultimate is in woman of course great manifestation of beauty and he also remarked about the women's face that since we know all we can uh, if i can summarize it in, in simple terms the god is formless but yeah. we also that all forms are imbued with the divine matlab allah ka noor har jagah hai tajalli har ek cheez mein hai subhan all things are epiphanies so but ibn ibn arabi ka point hai in the, in, in women's face this epiphany is at its most Um, it is best developed that is why all are the epitome all are of divine uh reflection yes. the intimations of divine yes. beauty are manifest yes. especially in women according to ibn, hmm. according to ibn, ibn arabi man only sees in existence he only seeks god he never sees an object but 
often people do not uh, in a way consciously know this they uh, somehow they think in objects there can be a god or objects can be perceived meaningful but from ibn arabi's metaphysical but metaphysical point of view we all all people seek only god as well that's why all are fundamentally worshippers of one god only no consciously they may not be knowing this since is beauty since people are all attracted to beauty but just to be clear to it, it here is... they they are drawing a distinction between uh this kind of being drawn in with this beauty and lust they're not necessarily you know when they're speaking about uh the, the beauty the intimations of uh, divine beauty manifesting itself everywhere and especially let's say in women uh, for for these poets or for these scholars or for men um and and in nature but they're not necessarily coming at it from an angle of lust this is not this is not what sure. they exactly. this is because uh, i know some people were saying oh is this <laughs> to be to be disciplined for observing beauty or being drawn into beauty one has to overcome lust but there is a deeper point as well the desire as such is not to be castigated wow wow say that say that, that again the deep roots of desire <laughs> that that in fact there is a holiness of desire as yeah. well what is what are fundamental people driven by they are driven by god because god is wudud the most loving the wow. who is who is okay at, who attracts every the only attractive in the world and, is god and who do this so this kind of that, people think women attract or this thing or that thing attracts only god is the attractor so people are drawn to god only but god in a in a way has limited himself he has expressed himself in the form of certain objects where his and it's interesting that who do is that so, comforting love isn't it that kind of uh, yeah. uh, and it's actually in the hadith used <laughs> god is irresistible there is another exp- you know these divine names if you can you can recall them god one of the names is irresistible irresistible so who can resist for example who can resist beauty none of none of us can so god is able to capture people through, through these nets this that has to be appreciated and one point is we should not ap- fundamentally approach the question of beauty from a moralistic point of view it has to be approached from a, on from an ontological point of view अब अगर जल्दी फिर फिका आती है और ये चीजें आती हैं तो गुडमुड हो जाता है तो पॉइंट इज फंडामेंटली ब्यूटी इट इज एट इट्स ऑन्टोलॉजिकल प्लान अट्रैक्ट एवरी वन इट हैज नो टैग इट इज इट इज एज सच होली एज एज सच सेक्रेट बट देन इन द सोशल इक्विलिब्रियम इन द कम्प्लेक्स सोसाइटी एफ आई आर साइकोलॉजीज इमोशन अदर इज इन्वॉल्व we have sort to observe certain uh, in a way decorum that is what sharia does sure. that's what sharia does sharia channelizes our this Uh, instinct for beauty and it wants it to be you see, a way doc- to create doctor you said that we should not uh yes you know when you said whilst differentiating between this uh this love and lust and you said that you know but simultaneously one must not feel the need to castigate their desires to punish their desires and i i i totally agree and i think that's very well said but why is it then especially in what seems to be the islamic tradition there is and in other traditions there is this uh, emphasis by people to look down on desires they see as very um, you know evil and they see as from the shaitan and um, i don't agree that it is from the shaitan but uh, but aap ye ye sab kuch paate hain agar dekhe to ye yes it- in fact there in the specification of kashmiri tradition for example kashmir shivism the desire has been given such a central place it is never in a way uh, it is never trivialized it is never in a way castigated or exiled desire is desire is holy or divine and in islamic tradition if you know yeah what ghazali wrote about for example sexual pleasure that is a foretaste of heaven and in fact none of the desires in, in including shahwa the gaza but all those about ghazali talks in such detail, detail in ihya and other works that they are all to be used for god to to use it to transcend the lower self my point is desire can be a conduit it can be a stepping stone it can be a medium for elevating to the divine and as such desire is deeply deeply where from does it come what are the ontological roots of desire what is it so if you reflect on those things desire in islam has been 
not castigated it has not been looked down upon but there has been always that passion or centrifugal desire should not block our ascension to higher centrifugal for example centrifugal desire ha centrifugal Aha, whatever, whenever desire, yeah whenever desire leads us away from the center since god is the center and god is absolute beauty so point of tradition is to move towards this absolute beauty where no ugliness no limitation is now the point about these what we call call those castigated beauties the lower forms of pleasure is that they distract us away from that absolute beauty wo hame choti cheezon pe kanar karate hain aur hum absolute beauty ko miss karte hain that is why anyone pursuing women so hotly or anyone pursuing any fame or any worldly object so at at the cost of so, so many things he loses god because he dekho fundamental what is idolatry fundamental from a philosophical point of ideology it idolatry idolatry idolatry, idolatry. 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 ha huh, it is it is misplacing the absolute where it is mm. not say duniya mein koi cheez absolute ab ab if we construe something as an absolute it becomes an idol so god is nowhere in the world he transcends the world but everywhere is imbued with the divine light that is there because, but my point yes my point is it's not trying to ensure we move to higher beauty huh. and we alert to the danger of centrifugal passion is that ultimately serve the ego or the self they are, they are not they do not serve the divine so that ambiguity is there and that has that is why sharia is all about discipline of the self but not killing the self say this is the discipline of the self nafs ko khatam nahi karna hai nafs ko discipline karna hai then nafs se mutmaina nafs se jo higher forms hai then they but doctor sab the thing is that the ultimate beauty that you're saying inna allah jamilun uh, allah is in essence beauty but that beauty is formless it is yeah. seamless it is um unfathomable to a great extent so to 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 kind of focus or to to try and draw towards that beauty yeah. how does one do it except through uh you know like allah yeah. nur samawati wal ard Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, in fact, that things. has been a central problem for a Sufi thinker. That is why Ibn Arabi used to say we should have both the eyes of divine, of immanence and transcendence. Mm-hmm. God is not only formless; every form is really divine. That's what was all this was to wujud about. In okay. every form, mm-hmm. only God is the real. Since God alone is the real, so in every form, whatever in which is which imbues mm-hmm. with beauty, it is really God there. So is point it is. The... the 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 kind of the tajalli of god at in almost at that s- string vibration level in quantum physics yeah. almost making up matter yeah. is that what yeah. we hmm. yeah i mean every form is god welling up through that form so we we say god alone is the haq the real the truth iska matlab kya hai whatever is i mean that very since we define god in terms of being whatever is really that is divine so the every form jo bhi duniya mein hai whatever form we encounter god is immanent there mm-hmm. see the problem of theology was it lost sight of the immanent god it saw god only as transcendent mm-hmm. but then but then mysticism sufism brought this balance back it saw so god should be simultaneously immanent and transcendent we should be able to see god in every form and then transcending all forms that is why abu yazid bistami used to say that i have not seen any object without first seeing god in that so my mm. but the point is we have normally forgotten it that's why there is so nihilism and absurdity and all that chaos we fail to see god in everyday object but people so, will just, ask dr saab yeah, they will say yeah. that look what about in all the evil what about in all the uh the, fact, the horrible people the the murderers yeah yeah in fact that has been my central interest that's why i wrote a book problem of evil in islamic philosophy a case study of iqbal and then i have i have been working on another book on problem of evil in muslim thought so my point is is we is god in them as well theodicy yeah have justifying ways of god to men that has been one of the central questions where atheism has such a strong hold in modern consciousness atheism ka sabse bada argument yahi hai ki problem of evil yeah what is god doing in heaven so there is so much evil in the world now i think if agar hum muslim kalam ki taraf jayenge everywhere in muslim kalam and muslim philosophers they have when they define god as perfection as being so for them evil is what we, that has been called it private bona it private you 
there is no evil as such. Evil is absence of good. It does not mean that evil is in a way negated at at mm. at, at the relative plan. My yeah, point yeah. is for the like for, August, for the Muslim Saint Augustine, uh, for, his kind for, of statement that it is the Ghazali, absence of call, evil. Can, jo bhi Muslim mutakallimin hai, they have always th- none of them has given evil a category, a permanent category. They are, they all define God as being as fullness or being as perfection. So what we call evil is absence of good. Just a darkness hai. Darkness is not an entity; it is just absence of light. So, what? Why we see? Why? Why is now? Now, why is evil in the world? Simple. Mm-hmm. It is very simple. This kalam argument. I think everyone should be able to follow that. No, so you are saying that the then you are saying that the default is that without the light of God, let's say, we are all just very evil people. That is the default setting. Is that what we're saying? Is that what you're saying here? No, 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 no. Defaults. No. It is evil. Doctor Sab, somebody is just asking uh, slightly to get your face into the into the into the screen. Oh yeah, excellent, excellent. Sir, the jelly. यहाँ से भी तो jelly हो. आप कभी जलवे हो यहाँ पे? We need. जी जी. That's yeah. That's a lot better. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You had asked the question. I just forgot. No, I was saying that you see because. the problem of evil that we're yeah. saying well if you say like saint augustine said well really evil is just the uh, it's just the absence of goodness it's not actually something but then killing people and doing all these things is evil so these people are these if we say it's just the absence of khair the absence of god's light on them then that means the default setting in the absence of god is that we are all evil unless god shines light on us i i feel that uh, mm. uh, now now i could understand your point better in fact we say god alone is good mm-hmm. all else is disequilibrium we will not call it a straight forward evil all else is disequilibrium whatever is separated from the first principle i mean god is contaminated by evil in fact we see evil even in the paradise सरपंट वहां भी होता है सरपंट सो पैराडाइज सरपंट हो आई मीन द हां द एब्सोल्यूट ब्यूटी एब्सोल्यूट गुड सिर्फ गॉड है दैट्स व्हाई सॉवरेनिटी ऑफ द गुड ओनली है लेकिन आप इसका मतलब है कि दुनिया में जो भी इविल है या सो वो कहां से आया वो क्योंकि जो भी दुनिया में है इट इज ओनली एबल टू एक्चुअलाइज सर्टेन ऑफ द डिवाइन एट्रीब्यूट्स माय डिवाइन नेम इज ऑल थिंग्स इन द वर्ल्ड इन इब्न अरबी स्कीम ऑफ थिंग्स और एक्सप्रेशंस ऑफ द डिवाइन नेम्स नाउ नथिंग इन द वर्ल्ड fully actualizes them that is why it there it means it has certain limitation that limitation we call evil point yeah. is when we for example see evil actions yeah. as as an action nothing is evil or see it evil get what about only what about causing action. harm dr sir context that is why ibn arabi used to say evil is relative it is only our context or anthropocentrism which gives it such a huge meaning my point is from the divine if we see from the divine eyes as being rooted in the being all things are expressions of what we call three separate the play of the divine in that sense nothing is evil but when the other comes in when the relations comes in the humans the society and the other things imagine there is no person on the world there is only one man uh, mufti abdullah <laughs> what is an evil for you ab kya karenge all on my own <laughs> there, there, there is nothing evil Mm-hmm. So my my point is when the other is born, two human consciousness are born, and their interaction, certain things that lead to the less you're evil. Say, you're saying that we call evil. So you're saying evil is a social entity. It is born in society. It's not something. It can't just happen if there's just one man without the other. I mean, there needs the otherness. This there is what needs we're saying. The other. Yeah, I I mean, though there there have been distinguishing metaphysical evil from the social evil. there's a separate discussion a very abstruse discussion but the sum and substance of that is agar khuda ki hukumat duniya mein hai when we say god allah allah ki hukumat har cheez pe hai wallahu ala kulli shay'in qadeer so it means god is all possibility say ek central point kya hai yahan kya hai jab people define god as omnipotent iska matlab hai ki wo fir lekin wo fir wo kuch cheeze nahi kar pata hai unke unke angle se they say god is in a way not able to do it but ha jaise ki somebody somebody's dying and they say a chai god's rahim phir you know why should we save him yes yes 
یہاں دیکھو یہاں کیا امپورٹنٹ ہی انٹروڈیوس دیز نوشن رحیم اینڈ رحمان فرام اے میٹا فزیکل پوائنٹ آف ویو لیکن لوگ ہاں لیکن لوگ ان کا ایک مورل اور سینٹیمینٹل میننگ لیتے ہیں وٹ از رحمان رحما دا جوائے آف بینگ ایز سچ گاڈ آؤٹ پورس دا جوائے آف بینگ وچ ہی واز ان پرفیکشن ٹو دا ادر کریچرس اور اسی کو یونیورس کی بریتھ آف دا مرسی فل دا یونیورس از دا بریتھ آف دا مرسی فل پوزیشن بڑے بڑے مسلم فکا میں بڑے بڑے لوگوں کی آلموسٹ ڈیفالٹی ایک فیمس سکالسٹک میڈیول ایک فارمولیشن تھی گاڈ از واٹ از اور جب آپ ملا سدا کا اسفار دیکھیں گے جو جس میں جو گاڈ ایز بینگ ایز وجود ایز حق ایز حق اینڈ آئی فیل دس از وے تھلک ٹوک دس وے اٹ ایتھیز ان نو ایتھیست کین ریفیوٹ دس نوشن اف گاڈ ایز بینگ وین فار ایگزامپل پال فلچ ان 20th سینچری ری فارمولیٹ دس ارگومنٹ ا گاڈ ایز الٹیمیٹ کنسرن اینڈ گاڈ ایز بینگ دین ون اف دی فیمس پروفیسرز انٹروین ان ہز لیکچر ہی سیڈ Mr. Tillich, you have denied me God-given right to be an atheist. Because when you define God as the totality of being, so one cannot step outside the, the divine in, in, in any case. So when God is defined as the perfection of being, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever that is, that is irrefutable on its own terms. And I feel so this is, not- doctors, this is where Tillich and these people took that God is ground, the ground of being. Ground of being. God yeah. is ground of being. Yeah, exactly. suffering there's a lot of Uh, so how do you not know that God is an evil? Because if we're saying he is as is within, you know, putting whatever we see is a manifestation uh, ultimately of the will of the divine, then what we see isn't pleasant. You know, we see a lot of brutality. We see a lot of harshness, struggle, survival uh, in the world, in nature, in people. We see cruelty. We see kindness. We see loving. We see caring, but we also see a lot of tyranny. So how, how, how does that one is, reconcile? Uh, yeah, yeah. In fact, that is why we need to master the understanding of the theory of divine names in Ibn Arabi. Point is, world is not constituted by God as such. God is not as such in the world, in that crude sense of the term. World is constituted by the dialectal play of divine names. Say, Allah ka ek naam hai Kahar. Kahar. بولتے ہیں So everything in the world, by precise definition of not being God, by being separated from the divine in, its, in, in itself, 
So it is constituted by the play of binaries, by the play of good and evil. So in fact, you will see the play of light and darkness everywhere in the world. That's why nothing in the world is absolutely pure. That's why it is said to God, to purity belongs primarily to God alone. That's why when Jesus was asked, when someone said Jesus is good, mm -hmm. he said, no, God alone is good. Mm -hmm. So my point is the mm, perfection mm -hmm. only belongs to the divine. Al, al kamal no lillahi wahda. Al kamal lillahi wahda. Exactly. Perfection Subhanaka, is Allah. Subhanaka Allah. Hai, it means it belongs to that sphere only. Mm -hmm. So wherever humans will be, they will be in, 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 always in a certain dialectical interaction. Or usme evil by default aayega. When you when you're is, saying but, just to expand, just to clarify for people, when you're saying a dialectical interaction, often it's assumed if if we're looking at um, generally in philosophy, if you're, if you're looking at the term, that we're, we're looking at a contrast of things, which then maybe results in a, a result which then may contrast with itself and go further. Um, is is this what we're is this or you're just speaking about a general contrast of um of opposites a dialectical yes, I mean, a dialectical I, I, yes, yes. I mean when we say the world it means it is not god god is separate category and when we have to distinguish world is separate category from man you there is say why, why is there five degrees of divine presence from ahdiyat to wahdiyat to na, to la, from and ultimately to nasut when we enter the world of materiality mm -hmm the divine light and or the absolute in itself it is not there as such so it means matter is constituted by its own what we call the material principles what gives and it, as such it is separated from the divine and as such it is then the divine names come into the picture and divine names are oriented to, a, to divergent ends what is kahar is not vudud what is vudud is not jameel or what is mean is not hmm. other than so, so, Jalali and Jamali name. Dr. Saab, so let's say people say now the name of Allah, if we're going to take names like Al-Jabbar, you know, the, the kind of forceful, uh, or if you're going to take names like Al-Mudil, more importantly, like the, the which is translated as the misguiding. So, uh, yeah, one who leads us. Yeah, the one who leads astray, sorry. Uh, it's translated as so is kya matlab bane because you know what what, yeah, what could this possibly yes. mean because if allah is ar rahim yeah. ar rahman how is yeah, he the yeah, misguy yeah. the one who leads astray uh, there, there is uh, there is isn't in 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 in, 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 in there is school there is one figure who has especially commented on this the point he has made in, in fact there has also made it he gives an example of a curvature of a bow mm -hmm. Of a bow. The, to be honest, he said, uh, he said everything is technically uh, or primordial on a straight path. The Quran could be kata. Harek is ki Allah ne harek is ko thame huye hai, pukde huye hai. Everything is set up. Uh, that ev ha, everything yeah. is musakha in its kulun fi mustaqarrilla. If, 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 if the arrow has to be shot from a bow, it has to be curved. So the point is, curvature of the bow is its straightness. For to function it to function properly. Ab jo muzillo hai, jo 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 bhi aapko astray lagta hai ya heart heart disequilibrium lagta hai, iski precise function yeh hai ki it circumvents normally a straight path ko avoid karne se kya hota hai? Because straight path is people should not follow lust, they should follow reason, and then they will reach the divine. But log yeh nahi karte. They will follow sensual pleasures, the centrifugal passions. They will go here and there. Then as a result, they will suffer. Because of slightly here just and to there, bring it... and their suffering, and their suffering will teach them that the absolute is not here, God is not here, our path is not good. But then their 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 movement for straight path will be in a way just facilitated. Just to bring you back so into the picture, Dr. Sir. And they say that the people of the past do not believe in the truth. Most people are saying that they do not believe in the divine guidance of prophets. They do not believe in the truth. Now, you can understand the words of the prophets, but from the words of the नहीं समझते हैं जब तक वो गुनाह टेस्ट नहीं करते हैं फिर उसके कॉन्सिक्वेंस में सफर नहीं करते हैं तब तक वो अच्छाई की तरह so नहीं आते हैं अब to, to that, that basically this is people that have kind of just gone off on their paths of lust and desire and kind of uh, lost themselves 
that that is how it's it's a kind of contrast for them to understand. Uh, just on a, on uh, on a side note, Doctor, could you slightly just we're losing you in the in the frame. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Merbani, Mer. I, I but you know, Doctor Sab, I want to say here. A moment ago, we said that look, one should not castigate their desires. One should not kind of demonize desires or lust or. Sure, uh, sure. But here, we bat we na ke teko we saying that look. Uh, महमूद है उसको आप फॉलो किए जाएगा बट कुछ डिजायर में क्या है कि अगर आपने मिसकनस्ट्रू किया एब्सलूट जो वहां चीज मतलब एक इंसान औरतों के पीछे बात कर रहा है आप तकलीफ उठा के आप स्टेट पास पे आइए और ताकि आपके लिए देखो पीपल डाई फॉर प्लेजर but higher than higher than pleasure is joy joy happiness happiness joy. okay bliss bliss dekho wow. term kya hai pleasure ka pain contrast hai lekin bliss ka koi contrast nahi hai dekho by hmm. definition hamara jo that is so that's an interesting bliss. point those of you that didn't get it. the doc said that uh, pain is contrasted by pleasure but bliss has no contrast exactly hmm. and god is this bliss so my point is if we are really oriented our if we, if we are really attentive so what is sufism sufism is attention towards breath or attention towards present moment being in the present mm-hmm. sufi so, ibnul waqt hota hai what is being the child of the moment past or future ki, ki jo ek mental construction they are both from the devil in the sufi understanding so uska It's point is illusion hai. from the devil so, क्योंकि <laughs> If if we are really अगर हमें अपना गुड चाहिए तो हमें ब्लिस के ब्लिस चाहिए ब्लिस के लिए कोशिश करनी चाहिए बट 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 मुजिल में क्या होता है या मिस गाइडेंस में क्या होता है कि पीपल गो आफ्टर स्मॉलर ऑब्जेक्ट दे मिस द हायर ऑब्जेक्ट दे मिस द डिवाइन दे फेल टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट आवर रियल सर्च इज फॉर गॉड एंड नथिंग बट गॉड बट नॉर्मली क्या होता है कि वो छोटे छोटे ऑब्जेक्ट्स में फंस जाते हैं वहीं पर रुक जाते हैं उसकी वजह से उनकी स्पिरिचुअल ग्रोथ रुक जाती है एंड वी कॉल दैट इविन so my point is islam has no problem against desire but it wants desire to to, to uska jo ultimate ontological end hai wo divine hai us pe agar ruk jaye lekin kya hota hai ki people in centrifugally idhar udhar move ho jate hain straight path ki takliye bardash nahi karte hain so they in a way so what, what you're saying for for people is that it's islam does not demonize desire but it sets higher goals it aims yeah. it has a higher benchmark in saying not to yeah. get caught up and obsessed yeah. with desires yeah exactly mm. our own greatest good is islam's objective sharia ka sara jo bhi kaha na it, it it is ultimate agar ibn hazm ya koi bhi bade authority dekhenge she why is their sharia ultimately to actualize the good in us mm. yahi hai na ki ek kuch aur hai to ab is good ko actualize karne ke liye aapko choti choti cheezon ko kya karna padta hai sacrifice karna padta hai aap choti choti cheezon ke ya trivial cheezon ke ya jo which are not in a way in accordance with the human dignity un cheezon ko agar pursue karenge you are straying from the proper path jo divine ki taraf jata hai dekho sharia ki definition jo hai jo you know that better to move towards an oasis an oasis an oasis oasis is from oasis to go to for this drink and to go to drink the shortest path to an oasis sharia is to go to god yes oasis is god if we want to reach god if we want to reach the divine in the shortest way we should abide by sharia if we do not do that fir hum jail mein jate hain kuch log jo idhar udhar ke kaam karte hain unko jail jana padta hai ya or they have to suffer the music 
देखो शरीयत में हाफिज हाफिज शिराजी का एक मशहूर ये शहर है उसका लेकिन उससे भी डीपर पॉइंट क्या है द अदर इज माई सर द डीपेस्ट ग्राउंड क्या है जब हम अदर की अगर आप इकबाल की खुद ही असर खुद ही देखेंगे द खुद ही दो पॉइंट क्या है हम किसी पर ऐसा नहीं करते अगर हम किसी अदर पर रहम करते हैं वी आर फंडामेंटल हम अपने आप पे रहम करते हैं क्योंकि कोई अदर है ही नहीं या दुनिया में खुदा है या जो लगता है कि ईगो है क्योंकिजेशन just so who you know mazahir yeah, just one the, moment before we just go on to that you know just on this point yeah. dr saab that look i totally agree with you i've often said myself that look really the the fundamental base of morality the the instinct rests on this concept of harm we've an empathy we recognize harm and we don't and we can empathize with it and then we build the rest on it through socialization and i totally agree with you that the whole sharia really comes down to the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam la darar wa la dirar you know do not cause harm yeah. now yeah but here an interesting point just to tie into what you're saying then why is one of the names people will say of allah adar you know the harm harming so ye yeah. yeah is par zara exactly hmm. yes 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 there is isme ek central question hai jab hum iblis ko galiyan marte hain na what we miss okay शैतान को सब गाले मारते हैं देखो पॉइंट क्या अगर आप उसके बारे में मिस्टिक्स के यहाँ देखेंगे मंसूर हलाज के यहाँ देखेंगे इबलीस को कहा गया है कि खाजे या रूमी के यहाँ भी वो ग्रेटेस्ट लावर कहा गया है वो क्यों कहा तो अगर आप इकबाल को भी देखेंगे अगर आप यहाँ से गोयटे को भी देखेंगे या अगर आप ट्रेडिशनल ट्रेडिशनल में देखेंगे अनुराग कुमार स्वामी का एक मशहूर ऐसे है हेल उसको जब पढ़ते हैं तो उस सूफी की जो सेंट्रल अंडरस्टैंडिंग कहते हैं कि हमारा सबसे बड़ा दुश्मन हमारा नफ्स है तो वहां हम नफ्स के साथ उसकी एक आइडेंटिफिकेशन कर पाते हैं अब जो दुनिया में आते कहा था जोर कहाँ से नुकसान करने वाला कहाँ से आ गया इनफैक्ट इब्दार भी दिस पॉइंट देखो क्या होता है जब हम टोटलिटी ऑफ गॉड की बात करते हैं तो एक मॉरल एंटिटी नहीं वहां गुड ऑन्टोलॉजिकल है मॉरल नहीं ओके सो गॉड जस्ट फॉर पीपल दैट वी वर सेइंग दैट गॉड इज द एसेंस ऑफ गुड दैट्स व्हाट वी आर सेइंग देयर इज गुड बट इट्स नॉट मोरालिटी वी डोंट फोकलाइज इट शुड नॉट बी रिड्यूस्ड टू द मॉरल गुड इसमें एक सेंटिमेंट आता है कि इंसान पे रहम आता है फिर अगर ऐसा होता there should be no beast in the world should be tearing apart the exactly, exactly 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 no meat eating there should be no, no meat eating there in fact in our digestive system or in the room then there are so many microorganisms killing each other every moment of course of course so it nature is your, very yes. cruel uh, huh. <laughs> yes so my my point is what the function of zoro is the, it is in one of the divine names so jis cheez se insaan what we call from a worldly point it's a loss dekho hussein agar karbala mein mar gaye sara khandan shaheed ho gaya it was a loss it was, from a particular point yeah. but so yeah yeah divine name zaru ka ka kaam hai lekin kyunki hum jab kehte hain ki sare divine names ko aapko zehen mein rakhna padega aur sabse important baat hame kaha gaya hai ki quran ne jo kaha aap allah ko acche naam se yaad kar humne hame ye nahi kaha gaya ki ya kaha aur mango ya 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 muzillo हम ऐसे नहीं हम यार रहमान तो मांगते हैं yeah, तीसन... ये इब्दा ये पॉइंट रेस किया है पॉइंट इज फ्रॉम अ ह्यूमन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू वी नीड कंफर्ट वी नीड पीस वी नीड ओनली दोस डिवाइन नेम्स व्हिच एक्चुअलाइज इन द ब्लिस नॉट जलाली नेम के पीछे आम इंसान अगर नहीं भाग सकता है ही शुड नॉट प्रे फॉर दैट बट इन द वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमी ऑफ थिंग्स 
جلالی نیم اور جمالی نیم دے بوتھ آر نیڈڈ دین ورلڈ کین فنکشن اگر ایسا نہیں ہوگا تو لیبر پین میں دیر شوڈ بی نو لیبر پین ان دا ورلڈ اگر ون ون کڈ سے یو سی ون کڈ سے ڈاکٹر معروف دیٹ لوک سنس گاڈ از آل پاورفل اینڈ ہی از آل رحیم نہیں نہیں گاڈ جب آل پاورفل کرتے ہیں یہاں ایک غلطی ہوتی ہے وہ تھیولوجیکل پرسپیکٹ جلدی آ جاتا ہے فرام میڈیسن پر وی سے گاڈ از آل پاسبلٹی اور پاسبلٹی مطلب ہے کہ جو بھی پاسبلٹی ہے اٹ ہیز ٹو بی ایکچولائز بیکاز گاڈ از اے ٹوٹلٹی آف بیئنگ وین یو سے گاڈ از اے ٹوٹلٹی آف بیئنگ اٹ مینز ہی ہیز ٹو شیئر ہز پلین ٹو بیئنگ وتھ ایوری ادر کریچر ہو اور سیکس بیئنگ اب اسے پھر ایول آ ہی جائے گا کہیں نہ کہیں پہ کسی بھی بیئنگ میں سارے ایکچول ون کڈ سے ون کڈ سے دیٹ کڈ ہی ناٹ میک اے ورلڈ ود اؤٹ سفرنگ ہی کڈ ناٹ ہی کڈ ناٹ or he could yeah. but he chose not What, to the, the, I, I, i mean this this debate was carried by ghazali, ghazali yeah. in in ha in, in, in his famous <laughs> argument that this is the best yeah, possible the best of all, which is also uh, uh leibniz, leibniz i think also carried it forward the lab is also leibniz carried it forward carries it forward but, yeah. I, but but i think the way problem even has been tackled by many muslim theologians some problems are there mm. that's why i am fan of friends of shohan isa nuruddin shaykh isa nuruddin okay. who has expressed in one of his books on Islam and Pirinal philosophy and dimensions of Islam and uh, that most kuch dilemmas rahe hain muslim scholars criticism ke because they have fundamentally seen god from a will centric point of view mm. voluntarism what we can call that mm. god ko intelligence nahi dekha gaya god is but fundamentally god is intelligence god is intelligence will uska mm. will will uska exteriorized uske by will intelligence ke baad aata hai that's why in quran we say people we are saved by right use of intelligence aqal ilm istemal karne se insaan salvation achieve kar pata hai woh dil se just just to be clear you, you're saying that the, the center is uh it's not will it is will or it's yeah, not will intelligence. center is intelligence islam is the path of intelligence absolute isliye islam mein center absolute hai aur absolute ko access karne ke liye aap intelligence chahiye yeah that is why islam jo bhi ek irrational log kehte hain ki reason ko gaaliyan maarte hain interact ko gaaliyan maarte hain that's a great disservice to islam aur sufism ke naam pe aap dekhiye agar rumi ko bhi kuch log quote kar rahe lekin misquote karte hain rumi ne kaha hai ki aqal juzwi ra aqal kul badnam kar usne kaha ki jo conceptual reason hai jo half matlab uski wajah se conceptual intellect ki wajah se aqal kul badnam hui hai intellect what what is what is aql kul is is aql kul allah is that what we say dekho aql darasal point kya hai one there are two fundamental terms one is called intellect second is called reason intellect intellect ke liye greeks mein term hai noas aur jo reason hai uske liye so there's there's two terms you've got intellect and reason and comes from the greek noas what was the point of muslim sages مسلم سیجز کا پوائنٹ یہ تھا کہ فنڈامنٹلی جو ہارٹ ہے نا ہارٹ جس کو ہم بولتے ہیں کہ ہارٹ ہارٹ اور ریزن انٹلیکٹ اسلام ہے ٹرائی ٹو کمبائن دا بوتھ ریزن اینڈ انٹیوشن واٹ وی کین کال سو فوت کی جو انٹیلیجنس ہے ہارٹ انٹیلیجنس جو ہے اٹ ہیز ان فیکٹ اسلام نے اس کو سپریٹ نہیں کیا تھا فار اسلام فار اسلام گاڈ از انٹلیکٹ جبیل کس چیز کا نام الٹیمیٹلی فرام فزیکل پوائنٹ آف یہ intellect ka hi naam so okay just to just to It's fill the clean. people in so we're saying well look uh the, uh, the intellect uh was ultimately aql intellect yeah. is referring to it's 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 rooted in a very greek culture as well of intellect and coming from this kind of knowing but you've got reason which uh is you're saying uh the islamic tradition tried to combine the both intellect and reason and refer to it through the heart in the terms of the fuad or the qalb and what what okay but and ultimately are we trying to say what are we trying to say about intellect or reason here that it's ultimately it is the the great aql is beneath god it is god it is what 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 Yeah yeah I what I trying to say is intellect self knowledge is what is what is ultimately knowing god mm. point my dekhiye intellect 
एक्सेस इज रियलिटी नॉन कंसेप्चुअली इमीडिएटली डायरेक्टली जिसको हम इंट्यूशन आम तो लोग वो बोलते हैं ना बट प्रॉपर टर्म उसके लिए इंटेलेक्ट ही और इंटेलेक्चुअल इंट्यूशन But the problem is that the wire is very, very clear. So just to just to, just to clarify, so intellectual uh, intuition is our perception, yeah. being able to perceive things. Intellect, intellect. Yeah, perception. No, normal perception is also in a way immediate. Hai, usme bhi reason hi ka role nahi yeah. hai. Wo ek pre reflex. Because pre reason is a sense hai. of because in Arabic often they translate reason as nazar often. uh they would say that you know min haythun nazar like it, it involves some reflection and assessment we exactly. usually you have to assess it involves the evidence slicing of reality yes reason involves dividing reality for our convenience for achieving certain ends so that is why we have to why are their concepts reason concept evolve karta hai yeah for manipulating the world but not intellect intellect perceives the world directly okay so point kya tha jab ha jab islam ne kaha ki aap ya sufis ke ha intellect pe zor hai ab reason ya nazar ya jo conceptual intellect hai ab uski limitations aati hai modernity mein kya central problem hui intellect was thrown aside intellectual roots of reason were thrown aside aur jo reason hai na wo ek absolute ban gaya jiski wajah se ek rationalism وجود میں آیا اور رشنلزم کی ڈیفینیشن پھر یہ ہو گئی کہ وہ مذہب کو نیگیٹ کرے سیکولر کو نیگیٹ کرے سو ویٹ ا منٹ جسٹ جسٹ سو جسٹ ٹو ٹرانسلیٹ سو وی ار سیئنگ ویل اوکے ان ماڈرنٹی دی پرابلم واز پیپل ہول ہارٹڈلی ایمبریسڈ ریزن بٹ شنڈ انٹیلیکٹ اینڈ فارگٹ انٹیلیکٹ اینڈ فارگٹ انٹیلیکٹ اوکے سو اوکے سو دی کیمرا کیمرا از گریٹ بائی دی وے وی جسٹ پٹ اٹ بٹ یس سو اوکے سو but so you feel in some ways the intellect is more helpful than reason they are dekhiye what we call reason is a mental projection of intellect mm. so they they are in a way they should not be in a way put into the such a shallow binary what is dekho isme zyada important role aap if we want to understand it from an islamic point of view the place of re- logic in islamic tradition yeah what is logic is that it is from a divine ray of intellect yeah. that is why you, god cannot also go against that logic in that central sense point ye hai ki logic ki ek premise hai ek sacrality hai jo islamic tradition ne hamesha recognize ki is isi isi wajah se ghazali ko ya ba, jo bhi islami is istemal jo hui wahan logic ko ek important place aaj tak madrasu mein hai logic pade bagair aapko fir higher sci- higher sciences mein you are not able to reach out اور لاجک اور ریزن کا ایک یو نو دیٹ ریلیشن شپ اب لیکن یہ ہے کہ جب مسٹکس کے ساتھ ٹینشن ہوا تھیولوجنس کا اس میں دقت یہ تھی کہ تھیولوجی نے جب فنڈامنٹلی ریشنل نالج آف گاڈ کی بات کی تھی اور مسٹکس نے انٹیوٹیو نالج آف جی جی جس کو انٹلیکچوئل نالج آف بات سینگ فار فار دی پیپل دیٹ دے واز یو سی دے کیم ا کلیش بٹوین دی تھیولوجنز اینڈ دی مسٹکس اینڈ دی تھیولوجنز آرگیوڈ فار ا rational sense of divine being like a rational arguments uh, or rational recognition yeah. of the divine whereas the mystics argued for an intuitive um uh, reasoning yeah. for the divine so that's okay that's that's very fa- uh, fa- fascinating i mean i and more importantly when iqbal comes in iqbal try to show that کرائنگ گزالی اور وہاں پوئٹری آ جاتی ہے پوئٹری ریزن انٹیوشن ریولیشن دے آر آل ان ہائر آر کی سو جسٹ بیفور وی موو اوے فرام فرام دیٹ پوائنٹ آئی جسٹ وانٹیڈ ٹو جسٹ ٹچ اپ بریفلی آن دا پوائنٹ یو سیڈ ڈاکٹر معروف دا سو غزالی ہیڈ دس ویری فیمس کائنڈ آف کنٹروورسی دس دس تھنگ دیٹ ہیپنڈ اینڈ ہز اون اسٹوڈنٹ اب وقت ابن العربی ناٹ دا سوفی ابن العربی دا دی اسپینش مالکی So he even writes about it, and obviously they, there are odds on it, but it's his famous statement that لَيْسَ فِي الْإِمْكَانِ عَبْدَعُ مِمَّا كَانِ That 
that basically we live in the best of all possible worlds. And this is something which ba the world God could not have made it any better than it is. This was obviously Ghazali's claim. Later on, philosophers like Leibniz expand on this and take it further. It, you, you find yourself, you would agree with that fundamental statement, Laysa fil imkan, abda'u mimma kan. Because could not God have made a world without cruelty, without suffering, without where everything, a, a form of paradise ultimately? This question has been much debated and I think the the un, modern philosophy of religion may be so much has debate on, on, on it. But I will ask in a, a different question. Sure. Then I think we will, then we will be able to understand it. Was there available to God a separate will to make another world? This means that we have made the will to center the will again, the intelligence is not. Oh, when we say God right, is yeah. all possible. Just to, just then, to translate then, then, for the people that what, what, what you're saying is we have to always, with God, the central theme must always be his intelligence as opposed to uh, his will. Because what we're saying is that if this way we're looking at it, we're looking at it as though um, that there's more will involved than intelligence. Is this what we're saying? Is is this what you're saying? Uh, I, 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 I am also saying this. I am also point, trying to point out metaphysical perspective is purely intellectual. It does not involve what we can call the arbitrariness of will. So when we say that God is all possibility, it means all possibilities are necessarily to be actualized. It means that whatever possibility in the world is possible, it means that it is Wallahu ala kulli shayin kadir ka metaphysical meaning hai. Uska matlab ye hai ki dunya mein jo bhi possibility hai, usme included evil ki possibility hai. It has to be actualized. Kiki jood jab hum kahte hai na jood, jood wal karam. Jood wal karam. God is that, uh, to God, God is by when we identify him with him being, pure being, it means the pure being is God. Ab us, wo, wo will, uh, jab hum lafaz will lagate hai na, wo personal God, के एक उस खास कॉन्टेक्स्ट में ज्यादा इमर्ज हो जाती है जिसकी वजह से उस पॉइंट पे रह के आपको दुनिया में हजारों प्रॉब्लम्स और आएंगे प्रॉब्लम इवन यू आर नॉट एबल टू देन सॉल्व और सो जस्ट टू जस्ट टू ट्रांसलेट फॉर द पीपल um you see ultimately you're saying that god is uh the, the ultimate pure being so when you gave the example of karam or jude or generosity or these things but if we were to say that God has infinite capacity, like he can, it does not mean that each one of those capacities is to be actualized. It's to actually happen. I, I take it that's what we're saying. But the question then is, but could they not be actualized? Why would there still be problems? Um, I mean, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. yes, yes, yes. From Ibn Arabi's point of view. Yeah. जो मोस्टली फिर सारे सूफीज का है मेजर आई मीन वजूद हम मांगते हैं खुदा से वो सिर्फ देने वाला है हमने मांगे को तो मसला हमारा है बीइंग इज समथिंग मतलब जो बीइंग इज ना जो हां व्हाट एवर बीइंग इन द वर्ल्ड व्हिच इज व्हिच इज इन अ वे इट ऑन्टोलॉजिकली इट सीक्स बीइंग वो वो वजूद चाहती है गॉड्स फंक्शन इज ओनली टू गिव दैट बीइंग ही कैनॉट रेजिस्ट नॉट गिविंग बिकॉज़ ही इज जूद He's so, so being he's wants generous. He is generous. Ontologically, uh, it wants to be. Yes, ontologically. And yes. God, God cannot resist it that not be. giving his being. Mm. Yes. God cannot resist not giving his being. So usse kya fark padta hai? Ab dunya mein bichhu ne bhi wujood manga. So the the, the scorpion uh, wants dog to be. Dog ne bhi wujood manga. Insaan ne bhi wujood manga. And uh, now it came under the influence of divine names. डॉग में कुछ एट्रीब्यूट्स आ गए उस मसल अकल उतनी नहीं है उसमें सिमस पावर ऑफ सिमल है इंसान है उसमें पावर ऑफ अकल है लेकिन पावर ऑफ सिमल उसको उतना स्ट्रांग इसका मतलब ये है कि वी विल लूज दैट कैपेसिटी व्हिच डॉग हैज फॉर एग्जांपल ऑफ सिमल एंड डॉग विल लूज दैट व्हिच वी ह्यूमंस हैव एज दैट ऑफ इंटेलेक्ट एंड देन दैट वी विल कॉल इविल एनी लिमिटेशन वी कॉल इविल बिकॉज़ वी हैव सेल्फ चोजन दिस दिस वजूद विद ऑल इट्स लिमिटेशंस गॉड का ओनली काम है एज जेनेरोसिटी एज द सिपरेट जेनेरोसिटी ही गिव्स इट हम वजूद हमने मांगा उसने दिया yeah. अब जब हमने मांगा तो वी आर रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर इविल नॉट गॉड इसलिए कुरान ने कहा ऑल गुड कम्स फ्रॉम गॉड इविल आपको अपन अपनी नफ्स की कमाई है hmm. कुरान ने जब कहा ना ऑल गुड कम्स फ्रॉम गॉड तो वो इसी ऑन्टोलॉजिकल गुड ऑफ बीइंग की बात करता है 
اور کہتا ہے کہ جو آپ اپنی نفس کی کم اور ایول آپ کے اپنے نفس سے ہماری کمائی ہے اگر ہم دیکھو ہماری پرابلم کیا ہے ہم چاہتے ہیں کہ اللہ کے سائڈ میں یا آؤٹ سائڈ ہم زندہ رہیں دیکھو فال کیا ہے آدم کو پیراڈائز میں وین وٹ واز آدم ان پیراڈائز ہی یوز ٹو سی وتھ بوتھ آئیز گاڈ واز ایٹ دا سینٹر پوائنٹ یہ تھا کہ ہی ڈیڈ نٹ سی تھنگس فرام اے سیلف سینٹرک پرسپیکٹو کہ مجھے کیا اس سے نکلے گا مجھے کیا چاہیے بٹ دا فال واز وین مین ہاں فال فاف دا فال از میٹر فزیکلی وین مین ڈسائڈ دیٹ ہی کین لیو آؤٹ سائڈ گاڈ ہی کین چوز پلیجرس آؤٹ سائڈ گاڈ دیکھو ادر وائز کیا پوزیشن ہے اسلامی مسٹکس کی آل پلیجرس آر الاؤڈ if they are in god or rather allowed if they are in god but if they are outside god hame ghusl kyun karna padta hai why 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 we have to go for ghusl after ye ye sexual intercourse why why dr sa ha usne kaha ye ki for a moment we have uh, for a moment we have tried to enjoy god uh, enjoy something outside god aur uske ek composition aapko موسٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹیٹ
and it's what happened in sufi tradition since the path to pursue the divine through some shortcut is so perennial in human mm. humans mm. and drugs do achieve a transcendence though it has been sometimes seen if it is since islamic sufism may be a central notion that you have to consider sufism is a science of stations maqamat ka not a, not the science of hal nahi fundamental wah sufism is central maqam hai aur maqam jo hai wo moral virtues hai yeah, just just just, just to just to clarify sabar, for yeah, people that the maqamat and the ahwal sabar hai tas sabar hai tawakkal hai raza hai these are the stations sufi is one who perfects these stations ab unki wajah se jo ek fundamental moral essential grounding aati hai tab allah aapki then you better access god if you if you approach god from the from these from this higher stations la problem kya hai drug drug culture mein ye hai ki hum hum we hum fans jate hain us trap mein ki as if hame lagta hai ki koi hal koi wajid koi khas yahi ultimately hamara maq so it's not, not the what you just so people understand so you're saying that the the people the mystics they the sufis they distinguished between the ahwal the hal which was the more ecstatic the experience the the kind of experiential yeah. side and between the maqamat which were the stations of things like patience taqwa things like this and they were the goals the developmental goals not the the exi- the, the kind of experiential ecstasy was the, the the byproduct but if you get hooked on uh, even though one doesn't get addicted but let's say if you take these psychedelics and things one it's a shortcut and two it's it's going for the byproduct not for the real goal which is the maqam yeah uh, you can put it partly that way but i think one more imp- though ultimately wajid hi in a way jab hum wujood ki baat karte hain aur wijdan ki baat karte hain they they have the same root yeah yeah wajid wujood finding se hai so ab dekhiye hamara agar heidegger ko dekhenge so just just to tra- translate this is a very interesting fascinating point that these two terms yeah, in in yeah, yeah. in arabic jab hum ha jab hum existence istemal karte hain existence existence we exist outside ourselves with ecstasy aur wahi authentic living or primary sufi experience ya sufi goal wahi hai ki we live all the time 24 into 7 as if with an organism as if in an organism with a is this what, what, it, what is this wujud or wujdan orgasm with the universe Therefore, orgasm sufism is orgasm orgasm with the universe orgasming with the universe people the cosmos uh, orgasmic <laughs> with the universe yeah so if you <laughs> tell the cosmos you, yeah. we're coming is a whole different <laughs> it gives a whole different <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, coming with so the cosmos it has yes so at so in that, that ecstasy in that mm. great state where you know that famous union between ashab suhu and ashab sukur now when ashab when when suhu is privileged by the mainstream sufism usme the point ye hai ki that give suhu suhu okay. as not sukur okay. sukur mein aapko you lose consciousness sukur is intoxication so us mein ha yes yes so so my point is is it better to be sane and the mystic at the same time or or is it better to lose sanity and enjoy the ecstasy so the mainstream sufism was that we, we, we should be both sane and enjoying the higher world mm. simultaneously mm. so if we are able to move that very subtly in on that path then some sufis would not have so much problems with certain use of for example in kashmir many sufis we call that shodh takiyas they have been using certain these sub mood altering substances mm. but the point is it was never mainstream it was always in a way suspect because there is firstly a danger that it will be a short circuit to transcendence one will only enjoy the bliss of the movement and then the larger goal of getting assimilated in the divine or getting transformed say being, being, being one, one with the oneness yes so yeah. ultimately hamara kaam hai transformation not just kuch koshish enjoy karna that could be just outside god there तो प्रॉब्लम यह है इसलिए आप देखेंगे कि जो जो, जो चोटी के मिस्टिक्स थे तमाम ट्रेडिशन में वो वो वो, वो बहुत ज्यादा इन वो इन चीजों के दिल दादा नहीं थे yeah. न सुहु के ज्यादा और न इसे ड्रग कल्चर के आप yeah. हिपीज की अगर आप बीसवीं सदी में इफ यू वांट हिपीज ने ज्यादा मिस्टिक्स प्रोड्यूस किया या उन्होंने ज्यादा ये जो फिर वहां कुछ पैथोलॉजी 
So Privacy. just just to, that, just to translate that that uh, that they weren't so keen on the they, they wanted more a balanced path a bit between the both, not just this kind of intoxication, ecstatic. Sorry, I think that's a better way. This ecstasy and not just this dryness, but something in 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 between. Yeah, but you know, uh, Doctor Sab, that that point that you said about wujud and wujdan and existing and Heidegger. Um, what 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 is uh, just just to, would would you mind expanding just slightly on that? I find that very fascinating. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will, I will. See, when when are we? By man has been defined as self transcending animal. Mm-hmm. Point kya hai? Every moment, whatever you see, you search for something that is outside the self to be outside the self because self is the sorrow, self is the devil, self is your own greatest enemy. अब हम जब हम ट्रांसजेंडर्स की बात करते हैं हम एक उस जो भी एक्सपीरियंस आप दुनिया में करते हैं व्हेन यू ट्राई टू सिप अ गुड टी और व्हेन यू ट्राई टू एंजॉय जोक्स अच्छा आई जस्ट गॉट यू आर दिस हैबिट ऑफ जोक्स जस्ट आई एम रिकॉलिंग रूमी सेड दैट जोक्स जोक्स डायरेक्टली रीच द एसेंस ऑफ द डिवाइन Seriously, did he say that? Humor, humor, humor. Yes. Wow. That's, okay, that actually, justifies you know, all my humor. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had employed employed a person who would tell him jokes on a regular basis. Okay, I don't Islamic know. Islamic tradition. No. Yes, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had employed a person whose only job was to tell him jokes. Seriously, and okay. he also oh. yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So, so I mean, now the humor has been so central to Islamic understanding of the divine. But very few people have noted it. Humor, Hawaii has. If you look in in any major mystical book, you will find profound references to the humor. Point? What is it? There is one of the famous arguments that was developed in twentieth century. One of the philosophers argument from humor. Because because of the possibility of humor, we are able to argue for transcendence and argue for God. One, but I will not go into those details. My point is. whenever we want to be enjoying the best of the life we have to for that moment transport ourselves outside the self poet what happens in poetry you are transported outside yourself what happens in music you are transported outside yourself is this what happens in love what happens in love you are transported love. out of your ego yeah. what happens in whatever you cherish and our... where, where are you placing the wujdan is that the outside and the wujud is the Yeah, no, 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 I mean, I, I, I mean, God has to be found. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay. God, yes. So, so we have to clean is the mirror of the self, to polish our this. Then God dawns on it. So, mm-hmm. but that finding God is always ecstatic. Whosoever finds God, he becomes ecstatic. He cannot mm-hmm. then afford wo normal behavior. Jo kahte hain ki there is a famous lalla. Kashmiri mystic who said that by finding God, I then began to dance naked. Point mm-hmm. is, and it it could be metaphorical as well. But the point is, whosoever finds God, finds bliss, finds great joy. That is so overwhelming that you cannot afford a normal this so decorum and all that for that moment. Mm-hmm. That is why in great levels of mystics, when you you have the most intense experiences of. Of, of you are not able to be situated in this world that we know even the levels of the in the even, even the life of the prophet when he said I have a special moment with God at at that time I do not know Aisha koon hai, Ubaq Siddiq koon hai, ye koon hai. So that special intimacy of movement that has also been privileged, that has been also treasured. But the point is, the paradoxically, what yah Islam ki ethical foundation aati hai. Okay, you that, care for the other, there's a question about joy. the ethical foundations of Islam. Yes. Whenever you care for the other, you get joy. Whenever you care for the self, you ultimately may get momentary pleasure, but then you are. Let you me are... let me ask you here, uh, Doctor Maruf, that you see uh, this is absolutely amazing, and I uh, I find this so profound. But this concept of the other, and yes, there is from one aspect is what you're saying this. That the self, that the, the person always wants to transcend the self to the other, but then the other is also by you know one could argue that religion creates the other in a negative light as well and casts the other to an eternal damnation. 
uh mm -hmm. you know like and so you are on this right path and these people are going forever to to hell you know this uh uh sal sal salvation is exclusive um yeah i mean ultimately because many of the things that you're saying here that this you know for recognizing or that ibn arabi is saying recognizing uh in all creation in all things the divine many of these things are said in other faiths i mean hinduism is often misunderstood by people like they think hinduism is like that pagan kind of uh, uh right. yeah it's like this pagan cult dumb kind of thing i mean it does have some weird stuff about it which is you know may sound dumb but it, in essence it has a philosophy that is also just about one god that is just permeates all being and um so i mean one could say well if ultimately all these things are from god let's say hinduism ultimately came from god whether some changes along the way people did or not why uh why do some people argue for exclusive salvation yes that has that's a very complex that is that is a complex question but i think if you go to the mainstream muslim thinkers hukama sages yeah they have always they have always a, they have always questioned this monopoly on salvation mm -hmm. they have and they have understood islam as the act of surrender to the divine will not a particular faith that originated with prophet of medina in a particular time from adam to muhammad there is only one one what we call qayyum and that is metaphysical usme kya hota what is what really saves is that attitude of surrender to the divine to be empowered to be empowered and enriched and encompassed by the divine the truth that saves and in fact from that point of view if you see muslim philosophers and sufis they have not been exclusivists in in general they have questioned this monopoly on salvation they have not other for example sufis have known and they have converted the whole world by by, by being more open to the other the, and they didn't as such preach the uh, preach religion to them but they just read it to their higher being higher values that converted people to them to to their path my point is uh, if you just note other and then limiting salvation to the other, to to oneself this is if you go deeper into the psychology of it this is some there is somewhere centralization of the ego or the nafs in it mm. that is why in islam by 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 making it mandatory that you have to affirm all other previous faiths all other revealed faiths then only you become a muslim you in a way introduce the notion that others too could be saved even in ghazali who who made a condition formulated in, in a way try to articulate it was other uh, uh, but he in fasul tafsir and others he had tried to explain in detail that those communities who are not who do, who do not know historical prophet of muhammad alayhi salam so alayhi salam Uh, they are going to domination but then he said he has to be attractively present to them he has to to be known by them but then there is a deeper understanding of who is muhammad muhammad is the principle of manifestation muhammad is not just a historical personality when we say in a sufi context of muhammad nuri muhammad haqiq haqiqat muhammadiya so then muhammad is the muhammad is the death of being in all of us the ideal man in us is muhammad so knowing muhammad is so in that sense we can understand the exclusivity exclusivist claim see exclusivist claim has to be understood at its proper level then it is not a problem but if it is to be understood at the normally this ye mazhab this mazhab or that mazhab is on a deviant path they do not know muhammad formally so they are in for, for that particular reason they are going to be damned that has not been a popular Uh, that has not been a proper understanding in with muslim sages okay, if you go for example shah waliullah he if you did read him in detail hujatul ibaliga and other writings you can see how he opens the path of the salvation for hindus okay is and this he does in, not require... in hujatul ibaliga hujatul ibaliga and other works as well to usme usme kya hai usse pehle अगर आप मुला सदरा पढ़ेंगे या उससे पहले आप इब्न अरबी पढ़ेंगे या उससे पहले आप रूमी पढ़ेंगे मतलब रूमी ही का एक पॉइंट है कि एज मेनी सोल्स देर आर एज मेनी पाथ्स टू गॉड देर आर 
he quotes a hadith on this. This maybe that is the question that Athens speaks about the hadith. But the point of that hadith has never. But that. But. But. Uh, but the point was. Point was Muslim sages, Muslim Sufis have understood the other as the aspect of our own self. So they could not oh, exclude wow. salvation to them. Okay. So what we're, so, what you're saying yeah. is that, you see, although this otherness, this kind of al-akhar, this, this khitab al-akhar is intrinsic within human beings, what many people have done is kind of projected it on, let's say, the other, whether it's the yeah, Hindu, yeah, the this. Yeah. And what some of these mystics have done, or what the mystics have done, is rather than on other people and thereby becoming egocentric, they've they've pro introjected that onto another side of the the self, the ego. Yes, that is why Ruben Rumi mm -hmm. was asked about the seventy one deviated sects. He okay. said they are all within me. <laughs> <laughs> I I could say the same thing, but it would have a totally different meaning if I said it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and so, point is, we have to understand that God is unique in His every manifestation. So, every religion will assert its uniqueness. Mm. That has to be granted. That's why, in fact, in Christian tradition, you say Jesus says, "I am the truth. Mm. I am the truth." So, to to know Jesus is to know the truth. But in Islamic tradition, you will find Muhammad system at the center. That's why Nasser has used the solar system analogy that fits, I think, well. He said in every religion, there is like a solar system where sun is at the center. And that sun is their archetypal figure, their avatar, their prophet. But stars, that does not mean stars are in a way absent. Stars are there, but they are dim. Mm -hmm. Like when we see in the night, stars are there. But during the day, stars are no longer there. But that doesn't mean stars are not really there. They are dimmed by the light of the sun. So in every religious universe, their central prophet, prophetic figure is the center. Mm. But the point of Islam was ultimately, that is why Ibn Arabi again comes here. Ibn Arabi says the perfect man is attached to no belief. All belief is an attachment. Wow. Because, okay. it's from, wow. It, because it is from Uqda. Mm. Aqida. Uqda. It's a knot. It's a it is knot. A, yeah. so, it's a knot. So, he, so he, he says, for perfect man, he cannot be not. You cannot tie him to a knot. And so and Uqda, actually, just just for the uh, for the viewers that because the word aqida comes from yeah. uqda, which is a knot, and the word knot in Arabic uqda actually carries a kind of negative connotation, isn't it? Like they will say often in things like, okay, this is an uqda tun halat al an. Now we've untied this particular knot. It's seen as a kind of negative. Uh, like usually a tension, a problem. Exactly. Mm. Though it had technically a positive function, it, it is function was to bind us to a particular manifestation of a device so that we do not lose our, get distracted by hair or that. Because reason can be, it has a function of, for example, why is the skepticism, modern skepticism? When reason is, un, when reason was unleashed, mm. could discipline, when we couldn't observe a discipline. So it, it could flower into 10,000 forms. Then, even bring God into question. One, one would... So to avoid, to avoid that, theologians had devised certain proper, in a way, knots. Yeah. So that we are attached to the divine in a proper way. But then these knots become absolute. That is a pathology. That is why Sufis then resist that. Mm. That's when they will then target that, those who are exoteric theologians who just trade these. That and central, central question, and I will forget, the decision between faith and belief. Okay. Or Iman. Mm. Our Quran, whenever you go to the Quran, you will say central it is Iman that is never a not mm. and, and Iman is an existential affair. That you feel that you are in a way that you intuitively know. So it is not to be captured in any creedal language, in any conceptual mm. network. So deeply our Iman is an existential affair. It is like love affair. We cannot in a way love affair with the absolute. Iman I define as love affair with the absolute L or in love balls way. Love affair with the absolute. Okay, love. Love affair with the absolute. Okay, that love, the, the, the emotion is, is that what we're saying? The love what, sorry? Not emotion, it has an cognitive part. Oh, a well. cognitive, of course, of course, of course, of course. So, so, that's when, when, so that's when Iman, when Iman becomes deepened, it becomes Gnosis, Marifa. Gnosis, yeah, Marifa, yeah. Marifa. 
so my point is consistently islam has advocated this, this distinction what later our famous orientalist scholar this smith argued in this distinction between faith and belief problem is in the modernity especially when this age of decline has happened people have not understood things very metaphysically or intellectually belief became central that's why clash of salvage salvations as if we say other traditions are bound by these beliefs so they are excluded from the proper beliefs but the problem is religion is fundamentally demands faith and faith is salvific by its very nature and that's an existential affair it is not to be kept in any creedal system that's why jitne bhi aap creeds padhayenge aapko unme aapko fir internally matlab ek idea vaaste le lijiye ya aap usse pehle ka tahavya le lijiye ya aaj kal bhi jin aur un pe tab se bahas ho rahi hai aur criticism ho raha hai yahan ابن تیمیہ کا دیکھیں کہ متکلمین کے خلاف کیا بیسک ارگومنٹ ہی وانٹ اف وی اف وی کلوز ایگزام ہز عبودیہ اینڈ ادر رائٹنگز ہز پوائنٹ فنڈامنٹلی واز ایک ایگزسٹینشل اپروپریشن جو ایمان کی ہوتی ہے دیٹ شوڈ بی سیف گارڈڈ اگینس دوز ہو وانٹ ٹو فکس اٹ انٹو ا سرٹن کریڈل سسٹم سو دیٹ واز فنڈامنٹ بٹ جسٹ ٹو بی فور سم اف دی پیپل دیٹ واٹ ڈاکٹر صاحب ہیڈ سیڈ از دیٹ دس You see, the dogmatization of creed, uh, or, or sorry, the, and, and putting it of faith and turning it into a creed, this, by especially mystics, was deemed a kind of pathology of religion. It was, uh, this was a, a kind of like, this is where the disease is really, the infection is coming through. Uh, and I think that's very well said, because really, faith was about faith. It was about belief. It wasn't about creed. And creed is what brought much of the problems. But, you know, on this, uh, following on from that uh, line of thought, uh, Dr. Maruf, you see, you've got these different ancient religions at uh, certain similar times. You've got Ibrahim, alayhi salam. You've got the Indic, uh, you know, the, Vedan, the Vedas and the Vedic kind of period. You've got the Zoroastrians, Zartusht. What? Why different religions then? You know, one could ask that, you know, لِكُلِّنْ جَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ شِرْعَةٌ وَمِنْهَاجَةٌ We gave them all different kind of uh, oases to drink from and minhajan and a root on. Yeah. But why? Yeah. What, 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 why? Very simple reason. Mm. Very simple reason because individualities and temperaments differ. So religions have to differ. Mm. Because religion is not catering to the pure truth. That is the domain of metaphysics. That is the domain of what we call Deen al-Qayyam. That has stayed the same. For Quran, metaphysics has stayed the same from Adam to Muhammad. There is no difference in metaphysics from in, in religions at all. So that's why... So wait, just, just, to, scholars... just to unpack that slightly. So the Deen al-Qayyam, the yeah. metaphysical Deen has been static. What does that mean? Yeah. Just to understand that. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean the key saving moral and metaphysical truths. that really save that that for which revelation was sent why was revelation sent revelation was sent to save people <coughs> not to tell the detailed speculative systems or truths or philosophical systems about the world from, so from, from that point of view they have been so if you read the quran it has been said in la ilaha illallah it is all metaphysics and in fact we can find equivalent expressions of all major religions in la ilaha illallah you can translate this is this is the deen al qayyim la ilaha illallah this is the deen al qayyim okay. exactly mm-hmm. so so my point is when quran says sharia quran uses sharia in plural manhaj in plural so it means d- despite changing sharia from prophet to prophet saving function of religion didn't change mm-hmm. so saving function of religion is fundamentally matter of the moral and the metaphysical content so that has stayed the same point is Religion, we, for example, why are there different styles of clothes? Why we want to, you are in a different clothes, you are, I have to wear something else, you have to wear something else, and we don't fight on it, or we love different styles in our architecture. So why should, why should people diversity understand religion is in that way? Yeah. My point is, if we really understood metaphysics, we would not quarrel over religions. Wow, that is amazing. So and religions have to be different because religions cater to the individual and the emotional needs. 
say truth, pure metaphysical truth, when filtered in individual and imaginative expressions becomes religion. Mm. And that religion has a function of solacing people as well. Metaphysics need not be consoling. See, men, ultimately, people need consolation. They need solace. They need certain stories as well. They need certain... So narrative. that is the But, religion, as that's the Milla and the Deen. That's not the... The no qayyim, the ultimate metaphysical. Uh, yeah, the, I, I, exactly. Which we, we must put mm. God at the center. Say God alone is absolute. Absolute only is absolute. Religion is not absolute. Religion is a relative thing. That's why it has historically been uh, emerging in so many forms. In, in fact, mm. every day it changes. Agar up is in Islam, you say what does what is the function of mujtahid? What is the function of mujaddid? Mm. He reinterprets Sharia off and on. So point kya hai? Fika does not stay the same. And fika as an expression of that legal coding of yeah. uh, Sharia, so it changes. It means Sharia or Sharia ka ek formal structure jo hai, usooli mm-hmm. nahi change hote hai, but unka ek expression jo fika mein hai, it, it is ever changing. Close, but, that, but does that not mean the moral and the metaphysical content has also changed? Mm. So that does not change because that concerns our and very you being. Know, you you quite well read with things like uh, the Vedic uh, tradition as well and the, the uh, Vedanta and things like. Isn't in Hinduism they have a kind of tripartite uh, representation of God in that way where they say like Brahman and Paramatma and Ishwar? Is it that is that the version of? This interaction. And we can find in Islam and even Christianity and other traditions as well. For example, God as creator. Hmm. Right, okay. Vishnu, God as, God as destroyer. For example, Shiva mm-hmm. in one tradition. So, in, so what happened in Hinduism? The different names for the God, which are, which are in Islam. God is Muhi also and he is also Mumit. Hmm. God is life and he takes life. So, what happened for some... Uh, people, it looks as if they have been separately hypostized. That is, in fact, not the case. All are ultimately subservient to the one. Yeah. See, the conception of the one is Upanishadic. It is elsewhere as found. We find it in Doi's tradition. We find it in Islam. We find it in other traditions as well. Now, there has been a very important point which has been often missed. Mm-hmm. When we say Devas, or then people say that there are 33 crore Devata hai. 33 crore, kehte hai. 33 crore devta. Haan, okay. people, people often say in Hinduism there are 33 crore gods. Okay. But what people, but, 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 what, and I think what, a crore is what, 10 million or something, isn't it? Yeah, crore uh, is 10 million, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. what people are, but, but, but what is misleading in this characterization is people forget that term, the term diva corresponds fundamentally to the angel in Islamic system. I mean, diva and technically means children of light. Does it? Diva? It, oh, from dia. From, from dia. Of light. So what is, the, what is the definition of malaika? They are the, in a way, nuri creatures. Ah, so my right, point okay. is, yeah, if, if, you are under, if you are able to understand Islamic angelology better, then find correspondences in other traditions. You are always able to find, for example, when we see Firza Shohan's book, Transcendent unity of religions. He could find these correspondences. Mm. But since people, they do not really give a damn to this. What does the Brahman mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What does Sat, for example, Brahman has been defined as Sat, Chit, Anand. This is the Vedantic sat, term. Chit, anand. anand means bliss, doesn't it? Anand means bliss. Chit means consciousness. Sat means truth. See, now I, ah, now, wow. if okay. I tell you, what is the Islamic definition of God? They will... All be included when, when we say Vajid Vijdan, they are all included. And there is a conception of consciousness and the truth. Haq, when we say God is Haq, mm-hmm. it is truth. And God is aware, the God is a consciousness. So, if you are able to find these correspondences, we, then, we, then there would no, not be such an otherization as has happened in recent history. Do they, you know, do uh, in the Vedas, is God expl- described as this? As one, is that a dominant theme in the Vedas or not really? No, no dominant. That is the only theme. Okay, well. My point. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> My point is, no proper Vedantic scholar would would, in a way, identify with these multiple gods. They are understood as anthropomorphized. My point is the one. 
Mm. The pure being or pure being. See, because if I you go back to, to yes, I was going to say, if you go back to the uh, Indus Valley civilizations, with they weren't really statues at that time, which is just what about four thousand years ago. Uh, this seems to have been and Hinduism. I mean, this Vedas were there, presumably these teachings, but. It's there were more about forces, weren't they? Like things like Varun and uh, Agni yeah, and uh, fire yeah. and you have different names to them. Mm, yeah, so there is a tendency. Yeah, there is a tendency that we, well, some religions tend to degenerate towards paganism in historical, pathological water. These turn this happened in fact elsewhere as well. But the point is the central orthodox understanding is God is one. And in fact, we better use the term being, not God, if we have to understand religion is better. Because if you come to the conception of God, then you will say Buddhism, there is no conception of God. So then there is no dialogue possible with the Buddhist. Then Buddhism, then a Buddhist has no way of getting saved because he denies God. But then if you transpose this, if you use that language of metaphysics, we say absolute is at the center of every religion. They call God absolute. Then personal God may be not figuring in Buddhism or Jainism, but that is not a huge problem. Personal God emerges at a second stage in a when humans interact with the absolute in a particular personal format. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, what unites religion is the notion of absolute, not personal God. But absolute, but Islam or other traditions fundamentally they are maintaining. Only the absoluteness of the absolute, not of the personal. So just God. to just to kind of just unpack that for the viewers, what you, what you're saying is that look, when we're communicating with certain religions, they yeah. some of the notions don't carry across. Like so, obviously in Buddhism there isn't you know there, there isn't this central concept of God, uh, whereas within uh, obviously the other religions there is. However. What you're saying is there is always a central notion. We need to change our rhetoric, our language, because they, yeah. although they're not using the word God, but they're using, what do you say, the absolute? There are, absolute is the proper term. Being is the proper mm, term. That, being, that being becomes the central yes. term, which is really the transcendent ultimate being, which we would call God. Yeah. Now, the personal yeah. God, where, where we start, interacting or, or we choose to you know we see god as that personal relationship this is a secondary process and we can put that aside for a moment yeah mm. so okay yeah. i mean in that sense oh uh, you know somebody had asked the question here as well that um in fact i believe it was sayyid hamad ali it do and it say i'm not sure if you know him but he's been on a previous uh, mind trap as well now uh uh, he'd asked the question that of Krishna then being a prophet, or I think that's what he said. The question's gone further up now. Um, or being uh, a manifestation, uh, or did he say manifestation of the yeah. divine? I'm not sure. But I thought I thought yeah. he said prophet. But um, so, okay, I mean, what, 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 I don't know. So what, what are your thoughts uh, on that? Yeah, in fact, uh, we use better terms, avatara. Avatara is a manifestation of the absolute. See what is the fundamental for what is the fundamental function of the prophet? Prophet communicates the will of the absolute to the humankind. Mm. He's an he's an envoy of the absolute. In in when when we see what is the function of the avatara, avatara's function is almost similar. It he he manifests the absolute in 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 the self in in the, in the very flesh in the very being. Go, malab, usko ke khuda yaad aata. Okay, so by looking at them, you Go, remember in, God. Yes, in fact, this is the definition of a movement. Usko ke khuda yaad aata hai. To seeing him, you see God. Avatar is that final embodiment of that definition. To seeing him, you are in a way put in touch with God. You just are transported to God. So in that sense, in the Indian tradition, Avatara, that Rama, that Krishna, so functionally equivalent to prophetic figures but proper term they would not use the prophet term they would use these avatar right? avatar term but function they yes. have rishis as well though rishis are enlightened ha rishis yes that i want to talk about yeah. rishi is one who has heard the vedas heard the vedas see who wrote the who wrote the vedas according to the indian conception no one could write the vedas mm -hmm. 
they they have been eternally heard mm. the way the islam tradition we said i mean they have kalamullah. they have that uh, sh- kalamullah when we say god has been eternally jab kalamullah when, when god's speech mm. that has been eternal that has been heard then when it transcribes the particular historical milieu it is a revelation of the quran or the book but the primarily what is revelation it is the eternal speech of god speech. so precisely that is the theory of revelation in indian tradition as because well because they have they call it uh, if i recall it correctly they call it like you have the shruti and the samhiti or something the, the her- samhiti exactly so you have the yes, heard yes, yes. the oral kind of transmission which is the vedas yes in fact in in fact islam is in, in, in islam also we know fundamentally god's speech is is heard it is not written are the vedas a book are the vedas a particular book yeah. in book form today yeah they are in book form and there is a huge tradition of preserving the exact exact uh, what we call that semantics and the musicality and how we have to pronunciation hmm. there are great pronunciation schools that they have there is often a debate so indian tradition has made it a point to preserve the original understanding the way it was originally heard or originally it was recorded pronounced because it is an oral tradition as well in fact other traditions have been also primarily oral and scripture is a speech of god it is not a in a way writing of god so <laughs> and speech you know, the vedas yeah. are the, who were they heard by and written by yes yeah those who heard them they are called rishis ah right in fact yeah and and if in, in if you want in an islamic tradition the equivalent of rishis <laughs> normally now it historically the way sage when we say hukim if you go shahullah's grandson Shah ismail shaheed his great book abakat that introduces sufi metaphysics for the world in a very brilliant way though that aspect is often forgotten by those who now try to own him despite trying to <laughs> which which, so which grandson is, which ismail ismail ismail, ismail, ismail bahlawi ismail ha he wrote ha he wrote <coughs> most, mostly people know his book taqwiyatul iman that ha they, but they do not know his abakat abakat is where he is a pro- proper metaphysician and he summarizes shahullah's metaphysical teachings and there is a pin ultimate chapter on hakim hakim means sage this is the equivalent of muslim philosopher hmm now there is a very interesting there is a very interesting hierarchy in islamic tradition the hierarchy goes like this first is the prophet mm-hmm. then there is the muhaddas that was applied to hazrat umar from from oh, yes, his yes, mouth yes, yes. only so just to just to clarify with people this is not muhaddith somebody a scholar of hadith yes yeah, yeah, so there is, is a hadith that yes. laqad kana fi man kana yes, yes. qablakum uh, that there were yeah. people before you who were uh um, that they were kind of spoken to uh as in yes. inspirationally intuitively min ghayri yes. an yakunu yes. anbiya although they were not yeah. prophets mm-hmm. yeah then in the abqat this the author writes then then after this muhaddas there comes sage hakim and he says he is divinely protected against error unki ismat ke qail hai okay is he wow and not only that he says the prophet's best advocates are sages prophet so he feels they are, are in are, he feels the sages are infallible ha. this is ismail hakim hukama hukama so the hukama, hukama, the hakim. Hukama. Yeah, yeah, the hakim. hukama so his point is now if you go in in the islamic history from ghazali to shahullah or ibn arabi or previous people they have been fundamentally what we can call sages hmm. they are not merely theologians they are not merely yeah. fuqaha yeah. they are fundamentally in sages so point is and they have helped they have been called proofs of islam so koi not and not any faqih who are merely a faqih or merely a theologian they have not been called proofs of islam so those who have best interpreted the prophet in different traditions they are called sages actually this is true about in christian tradition if you go to christian tradition there is a thomas aquinas for example he has helped to, uh, he has he is the central figure in expounding Christian understanding of the world, for example, in this mm-hmm. in in that Catholic structure, or if you go to Buddhism, there is Nagarjuna. Okay. If you go to Mahayana tradition, especially, and if you go to, for example, Christian metaphysics, that more esoteric part, there is Mr. Eckhart, or if you go to Indian tradition, Shankara Acharya, Shankara, these are oh. all sages. Okay. The function of the sages is to explain the revelation in such a way that most people understand it and they are able to relate to it. 
the deeper truths of revelation are communicated more rational in more rational terms to them and hic- and see the note a very important point one of the functions of the prophet is to teach hikmah okay well, you al hikmah as the quran says yeah it's hikmah because it's interesting so the, because it says wa yu'allimukum al kitab it says al kitab separately to hikmah yes mm-hmm. yeah Yeah, the Quran has used hikmah as a separate, independent category. Yeah. There is an autonomy to the hakim. But the, if if you go by the Shah Fadlullah and Ismail Shahid's argument in detail, but the point is, you, you, we have, for example, Imam Shafi tried to restrict and or reduce hikmah to the Sunnah. Okay. So that limits its scope. So now Anwar Shah Kashmiri is a famous Deobandi scholar yeah. who hailed from Kashmir. He has criticized Imam Shafi on that point. And there have been other. If what, you go, what, what is what is uh, Anwar Shah Kashmiri and Farahi's stance on Hikmah? Yeah, their their point is it moral metaphysical teaching, jo of the Deen, when explained in rational terms, or not only need not be it 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 is to be fundamental, intuitively known. That constitutes Hikmah, hmm. moral metaphysical teachings of the eternal revelation of the Deenul Kaim. that is hikmah so it is not in a way to be identified with what we can call hadith or that is restricting it mm-hmm. now hikmah is what what is wisdom why why is philosophy for example defined as a pursuit of wisdom mm-hmm. power of wisdom so if philosophy is a sub- separate endeavor of <coughs> that we pursue wisdom for and that they need also moral qualifications for that if you if you read plato closely mm-hmm. no tom dick and harry or arabian philosopher is not a proper philosopher there are in greek tradition also sages we have a conception of sage mm-hmm. not just a rationalist philosopher see what has been called profane philosophy so in islamic tradition also we have the conception of not a rational rational sage to think and but a sage a hakim and hakim's qualification is Uh, uh, right, uh, qualification is are moral and intellectual mm-hmm. so hikma is what ultimately unites religions i see so you would and, say that these <laughs> what is wisdom wisdom is to place things where they are yeah where they should be so when prophet sallallahu said al hikmah to zalik al yeah so it so so it means hikma is in other traditions as well and when we try to use philosophy to that is why there have been in indian tradition as well and other as, as as well in islamic tradition hukama who have tried to give hello <laughs> i'm just slightly i'm sorry there has oh, some... no problem no yeah. problem you're back it's just the Yeah, there you are. Yeah. You're excellent. excellent. So, uh, yeah. so my that one of the central tragedies of modern Muslim, modern Muslims is that they have not given philosophy its proper place in mm. Islamic intellectual tradition in madrasas. Philosophy used to figure heavily in the curriculum, especially Dars Nizami. If you go at yeah. at one point after nine books, why that dealt with philosophy by part of the syllabus, but gradually they have been curtailed, curtailed, curtailed. and we know in islamic seminaries ibn sina and these muslim philosophers were nurtured so what is in why is it now restricted to the fiqh mostly and even mm. logic is being in a way taught very summarily yeah, not yeah. i mean that. it's kind of dismissed really religion unfortunately for the most part institutionalized islam um has kind of uh, become a bit bankrupt of the voice of reason and uh, it's just fallen yeah. into this kind of like dogmatism and and almost like just glorified cults um which yeah. is a shame really but yeah I, i was really i found that really interesting that you said about uh Maulana Ismail Dahlawi being very uh inclined this way about kind of consciousness and these all hikmah and stuff like this even though his book is really hailed by the ahlul hadith yeah. the ahlul hadith really rate yeah. him yeah. um yeah. as a pioneer yeah, yeah. yeah so that's really amazing and and that- Irony is he is not being read on the point of hikma. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wanted to ask you, but I, I know we're taking up so much. Uh, we've taken up so much of your time, Professor. But I wanted to uh, say, you know, in contrast to all of this, 
and this kind of thinking and religion, and you've mentioned modernity, you do have what was uh, the rise, obviously people challenging institutionalized religion, but it led to atheism and the rise of atheism, but with it brought the fear of nihilism. And this was something that you did look into personally, and especially Albert Camus, uh, who's an existentialist. I wanted, what, what were your kind of summarizing thoughts on that? Because I found that very fascinating. Um, yeah. Yeah, my point was, for example, when Nietzsche said God is dead, or when Kant long back fought arguments of God, which are normally, popularly, even today argued, but he showed there are problems in them the way they are usually argued. And then the secular age, we know the West and all that. So after evolutionary and other paradigms in scientific knowledge, we know it has been a very long drawn battle with religion. Yeah. And it, it, religion has been often on the losing side. Yeah, yeah. So by, and you know, modern academia is more agnostic than theistic. Of course, of course. Yes. So now the my my point was if we could that is why if we could turn to metaphysics, not mm -hmm. to religion. The, yeah. Though ultimate religion is in a way it is in that integral conception of civilization. We we have religion, we have metaphysics, we have poetry, we have all things. But in a proper perspective, in proper relationship, my point is if we could, for example, take a departure and look at Ibn Arabi as a central figure with which to engage in the modern in modernity, in the wake of atheism and all that, our debate with so-called atheists gets a very, very different turn. So fundamentally, Islam is trans-theistic. It is not theistic or it is not atheistic, obviously. It's trans-theistic. Metaphysics, uh, metaphysics is trans-theistic. Mm -hmm. That is why we are able to then engage with the Buddha or even modern Heideggerians and Derrida and all that. For example, Derrida would say, I would ordinarily pass for an atheist. <laughs> so and he didn't embrace what we can call crude atheism and this has been said about other major postmodern thinkers if you have to engage with them then we have in our traditions people like Ibn Arabi mm -hmm. and there we know there are studies such as Derrida and Ibn Arabi it has been published Sufism and this deconstruction Ian, this okay oh, he has published this book and there are many other studies where we are able to put in dialogue major modern atheistic thinkers or non-atheistic thinkers with Muslim mystics. My point is fundamentally mysticism in Sufism has given as a trans-theistic part of spirituality. What I read recently as well, which is just on this point, uh, Doctor, was quite interesting. It was in that recent book, the, um, what is it, the Immortal Mysteries or the Keys to Immortality. Um, but the uh, was mentioning about mystics from all religions. And it actually said the interesting thing about mystics is that they don't often refer to God as God. Like they refer to him using either um, certain symbols or terms, like like they might say, for example, and, he, and he's referring to, uh, in his study, including Sufis, Muslims, uh, mystics as well, like, they may refer to him as the pronoun he or or maybe light or something, but they often won't use the word God. And he said that's just an, he was making an interesting observation of of, of this point. And I, ju I just thought, well, that's an interesting since you were saying that of the trans uh, Ibn Arabi, theistic. Yes, hmm. if you if you if you read Ibn Arabi, he mostly uses Hak for God. Hak, yeah, the truth. Hak. And, 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 and if you can closely follow the modern philosophers or so-called atheistic thinkers, they would not have many problems with this word Haq. Yeah, yeah. Haq is truth and the reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, God is reality. There's a famous article, there's a famous one lecture and in Hussein Nasr's one of the books, Gifford lectures most probably, God is reality. That is the central chapter if we want to understand the Islamic notion of Tawheed. God is identified with reality. Mm -hmm. Now, reality is what is what we encounter, what can be experienced. God is not some supra-cosmic policeman, some extraterrestrial force, some personal being sitting somewhere that someone can question. See, when Quran says, Afillahi shakun, what does it mean? One cannot entertain a doubt regarding God. So what is that God Since about? one does one not entertain, entertain a doubt in reality. One cannot entertain Afillahi shakun, what does that mean? Hmm. 
can and again the doubt be entertained regarding God? So Quran questions this, and when Quran says God is the manifest truth, so manifest truth it means it is it unveils or it so much it confronts us in such a blindingly blinding light that no one can question or ignore it. My that's why Ibn Arabi would also say that even atheists have a tawhid, though it's an impoverished one. Mm. He said atheists have a tawhid. Who said this? Though it is Who said this? Ibn Arabi. Ibn, Ibn Arabi. Arabi. Okay. Wow. So, uh, though it is an impoverished one, he, he would invite them to move further and further into higher realms of consciousness. So, my point is, if we could restore the sagely understanding of Tawheed, we could give philosophers, the Sufi metaphysicians, the central place. Our dialogue with modernity, which is committed to certain pluralistic ideas and other things, it would, it, it would move forward. Somebody asked on that note that they said, um, you've... So where exactly does God live? Um, I mean, is that, does that, how, how would you respond to that question? So where exactly yeah, does yeah, God live? Yeah, yeah. Finally, could you ask again this question, yeah, where, is God, where does God live? What are so, you asking? So, so they're saying, so, so where exactly, based on what you're saying, uh, mm -hmm. if God is reality, so where yeah. exactly does God live or exist? Uh, yes, yes. Quran identifies him with a very life. Hayyul Qayyum. Subhanallah. <laughs> so God, God in the in God life and life. preservation of life. Yes, is God does not live. God is very life. Wow. <laughs> so when Min Hablil Varid, when we try to understand that, what is that? God is our very subjectivity. Hmm. How do you understand God is nearer than the jugular vein? God is the very name of the self. Then why I turn to Iqbal? Iqbal defines God as in terms of his philosophy of ego. God is the ultimate ego. I mean, if we go to the Bible, when Moses asks God, who, how would I address people to who, who sent me? Then there was this profound statement. God says, I am that I am. I am. That I am. So for Sufis, when we say I, we really, it is God who is saying I in us. And al, an al haq of Mansur al Halak. Yes. When, whenever, whenever we really say I, it is really God saying Okay. God saying. In, in fact, the best proof of God is that we have self. Or the self is in us, not we have self. The you know, self by self, us. are we saying here consciousness? Exactly, consciousness. Yeah. And that is, in fact, that is the name of the God. So if we understand in that way, there is no atheist as such. So the dialogue between theism and atheism is often shallow. So deep down, deep down, if we understand God as ground of being, if we understand God as the very self, or as the manifest truth, or as what is the case, what, then I think we, there is a very good dialogue between so-called atheistic thinkers and, Mus and Muslim Sufis, and we are able to move forward. Wow. Uh, out of curiosity, you picked two, you know, in that, uh, in your um, thesis, you focused on two main uh, philosophers. You picked uh, Albert Camus and you picked Samuel Beckett. Right. Okay. Why, why these two? Yeah. In fact, they are the most significant or influential theorists or writers of the absurd. And absurdism and nihilism have been central malaise or we can call it has been the central to modern understanding of the question of spirituality religion and life. because i mean so, just for people yeah. i mean uh, albert camus is is so huge on this uh, you know a key figure in existentialism in this understanding of really uh of of, of our being but also a ver he's a very key proponent of atheism as as well isn't he so uh yeah, yeah. Hurry yeah, he is, he is, he is. But my point was, if you read, for, for example, si if, if you read the notion of silence in Beckett very seriously, it almost converts with the notion of mystics. So Beckett was fundamentally denying creedal structures, formalistic structures. When, la when language tries to capture reality, he was denying that claim. So what is fundamentally absurdity? Absurdity is there is no meaning in life. Which is which has been the overwhelming ex experience of modern man who finds us because God is not at this at his center of attention, he finds mm. everything meaningless. Now, now then the now interesting thing is 
how can we restore meaning to life for the absolutist philosophers for, for if we go for this samuel beckett it is almost similar to what mystics propose that you attune to your being in silence you just do not be attached to your stories your narratives you attune to the being in silence that and in you, Kamu, okay that you are attuned to uh, attune to the being when, in silence yeah hmm. a, 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 and for kamu it is art, art. and here comes the Uh, art, art, poetry, and all that. You see, because you see, just on a, on a side point, Camus says that one of the greatest, and I've cited this often, that you know, pro- philosophical problems I find is suicide, like right. like this problem of you know of Sisyphus. That why don't we just kill ourselves and end it all? Like what what is the purpose to you know just to repeatedly get, like you know you've got him pushing this rock up the hill, Sisyphus. Like he gives this scenario. So yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, point is, how do we find meaning in life and do not commit suicide? My mm-hmm. point is, in Islamic tradition, art has also been a very important means of finding life. Mm-hmm. When you say ehsan, ehsan has to be understood in the terms of art as well. What is art? Art is creating things in beauty in wow. a style. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Art. And, art and, is very transcendent. It can be. Uh, yes, art is a portal to the sacred, portal to the transcendent. So, Kamu converses with the mystics on this point, and he, in fact. in other points from for many other you know just on a side people. on a side note doctor i was going to say that i've i've uh, said recently in times when i've been asked about the quran and i've uh, also referred to um, what is it karen armstrong's book as well that you see people should read scripture like art i've said that you know oh. we read it like a textbook and and i feel it's more that quran this this kind of recital this artistic recital to it that it is more to be read as art in in a, in a way yeah but ca- sorry carry on uh in fact in modernity it has often been said that uh, religion will be substituted by art and then attempt has been to read scriptures as art though there are some nagi to sorry um, say that part again say that again sorry uh, scripture has, should be read as art wow. it has often been said by certain modern thinkers matthew arnold said religion has to be substituted by art wow. but i think we should, yeah. uh, but great I think minds should think alike buy, i think uh, i think we should not buy into this duality of art and religion mm. i uh, when, when we define religion and we see it is essential culmination in ihsan very well that, said. that is mm. that is itself a pursuit of the beautiful and what is art but the pursuit of the beauty in a way so my point is in wow. islam mm. there is such a rich intellectual poetic aesthetic literary culture if we give more attention to it then we will find other paths of meaning open to us then we will find also dialogue with the secular modernity possible so if we could give other the central place which it had in traditional islamic curriculum now which now it has been in a way in a way relegated to the background so that needs to be given central place, given it is due place what happens ultimately god has been defined as the meaning of life now what is the meaning of life god now what gives meaning to life a greater understanding of conscious awareness of being when you are rooted in your being you are you, you solve all problems it was famously said by pascal that all of human problems arise from our inability to sit at a, to sit alone in a room <laughs> my point who, is who said that albert camus pascal 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 now pascal, oh, pascal said that now 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 if we see sufism <laughs> as a path of talking to oneself takhliya atikaf aur jo sara chilakashi what is all that about dialogue with the one's own self so if we really try to know ourselves is it not god, it, is it not in a way it's so true that we uh, for the life of us try forever to run away from that silent inner dialogue with ourselves like we preoccupy ourselves with so much noise just like to not have that yeah. that internal dialogue <laughs> yes there is a modern Muslim, modern indian mystical thinker kumar is krishna murti he has also argued this theme that, that modern man tries to escape from the self and that yeah. is his malady we do not want to encounter the nothingness at the heart of the self and that nothingness ultimately converts with the pure being of the divine 
Yeah. Whosoever knows the self knows God. That is that is what has been said by so many Sufis in so many ways. So the, so our central problem is not God. Mm. It is theosis. It is becoming divine wow. image. Okay. That we that we are primordially. We are that, that's, the divine. That's image. the problem. Theosis. Yeah. So my so this that that is the objective. Okay. I mean that 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 we have to achieve. Okay. If we are wow. able to achieve that, that... theosis. To become, if we are able to achieve theosis, we become div- be, be, uh, uh, re- recapture our divine image. Yeah, recapture our divine in which we are created by God. Then that is our salvation. So when people try to discuss God and belief and afterlife, they are usually missing the fundamental point that theology is ontology. Science of God is really the science of the self. Wow. So if we understand mm. theology as one, autology, one man arafa nafsahu, arafa rabbahu. You know the famous yes. saying that he so I, I attributed mean, as no, a hadith who serve knows his self. Theology autology is um, in a way slightly different statement, but it converges with this mm. as well. This is what this was said by Kumar Kumar Swami. So my point is, if we understand theology in this sense, as it is really our story, mm. God manifesting in us, unfolding in us, that is the. And then substance of all religion. Wow! And then love is born, and then consciousness gets attuned to its higher uh, reaches, and then we find a world with wonder and beauty and joy. Wow. For example, the central word wonder, taqwa. Ah, oh, Quran uses taqwa so many times. This fear of God, which is usually translated. Yeah. But the best translation is it is really the biblical root. It is awe of God. Ah. Oh. Awe of the real. Awe. Awe so, the... so whenever whenever we encounter the world with awe, we find God. So God lives so, in every experience. Awesome. That <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And there is a there is a great writer, Nikos Kazantzakis. He said, "God is the ah that I, that one utters when when one speaks when one sees a beautiful object. When one sees a beautiful what? Object. Object." <laughs> well, for example, a blooming tree, blooming flower. Ish, says, ishke oh, buta me kati hai God, zindagi. Yes. In fact, God has been defined as the sweetness of all sweet things. Wow. When God as rasa in the Kashmir tradition also, God is identified with the rasa. Rasa means the sweetness. Ras jisko bolte hai. Ras bol diya usko. The sweet, the nectar. Yeah. So when we understand God in these terms, say Jesus, prophet, defines God in terms of love. Wow. And Islam defines it in terms of truth, the reality. And then we see love is the in a way connecting mode. That's why Sufi is so much emphasized on it. I think it is then no otherization. Then we are in a way on a sacred ground. We are all one. We are not dialogue with the other. We are really dialogue with our own selves. Mm. And then Sufis are able to relate to the Quran. That is somehow un unhi ke zat pe nuzul uska hota hai. That is why wow. Iqbal said, "Jab tak na ho." تیرے زمین پہ نزول کتاب گرا کشا نہ راضی نہ صاحب کشاف that book should be revealed to the your own self then alone you can existentially or authentically engage with the quran wow Now okay. when, when, that so, when you so engage when people, with the quran it's you know you're placing yourself as that recipient of this yeah, revelation yeah, in yeah. the moment wow. so yeah. and my definition of muslim is building on these sufi metaphysicians it is to be open to experience to submit to the truth of the experience wow. god is not a particular object of experience god is whatever is encountered in every experience in fact we encounter only god yeah wow god alone is alone is encountered that is the sum and substance of this wujudi metaphysics so that is why world is such a beautiful place no one wants to leave it because always we are searched by god <laughs> we are haunted by god mm. there is a deep theme in abraham joshua heschel his his book is titled God in search of man. It's a God, great Jewish philosophy. God in search God of man. Search of man. <laughs> wow. And, okay. In fact, Iqbal has Iqbal has also exactly used a similar expression in one of his verses that God is really in search of man. So if we understand that, so God will not going to God is not going to leave us. He is going to find us, mm-hmm. and that is why we are always restless without God. That's why Quran says, "Allah bi zikri lahi tatma in al kulub." Without yeah. God, your souls will never find rest. And so in that zikrullah, in that being one with that, yeah. And I and I feel sometimes, you know, I don't know if you're a fan of people like uh, 
or if you read up much like John Elia, his shayari. But I feel that even when he says that some people, you know, they take it the other way or atheistically, but I take it this way, like when he says like, you know, ye jo asman ko takta hai tu, rehta hai koi asman mein kya? You know, like the way you look at the, the sky, I mean, does somebody actually live up there? I feel it's more he's trying to break off that institutionalized God and trying to say, well, you know, he says in one of these other lines that something like he has this line where, you know, oh. for some days that even God lived within me, uh, that he's creating this more natural, um, organic, uh, intuitive kind of uh, understanding of God. Yeah. Mm. I, I think this is so amazing, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Maruf, and I'm so grateful we've finally managed to have this dialogue. And I know we've been trying for a while and it's been difficult with the internet and stuff. Uh, but I'm so absolutely uh, in awe of what you've been saying. People have asked, before we wrap this up, people have asked, um, would you, could you recommend a reading list? Uh, for people who are interested in this, or certain books maybe that you, that people are interested yes, in. Yes, yes, yes. I think uh, I can share that with you on this email or like that, and you sure. can share. Yeah, but absolutely. The primary, primary things I can just mention. First, world scriptures. Very what, sorry? World scriptures. World scriptures. Maybe there is a huge canon, but you are not able to follow all that. So, so for example, I would say, Read the teaching of Taoism. Taoism is a very small text. Read, for example, Bhagavad Gita. Read few key Upanishads. Okay. There are hundred over hundred Upanishads. One mm. a few few can be, and one can read Dhammapada, for example, from this Buddhist canon. Mm. Similarly, one can finish in a week or so basic canon of world religions. Mm. It is not a huge list, I think, he and one can. I was going to say that you, you had mentioned earlier finish. on the uh, translation uh, by Dara Shiko. Is that in, in print, is it? Dara Shiko's? Yes, it is, it is available. It is available. Marj mm. al-Bahrain is available. Marj al-Bahrain, that he had translated the uh, Bhagavad Gita. Was it? The oceans, rivers. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. And, and then secondly, I would suggest to read commentaries on the scriptures by the most uh, treasured authentic representatives of various traditions. For example, if we want to understand Islam, we should not read it from the original size. It should be read from the way Ghazali, Ibn Arabi, Ibn Taymiyyah, these people who have been who have been treasured by tradition as, in a way, their own spokespersons. Mm. And they have been in a dialogue a certain way. So, and for and to understand Christianity, you should read people like Aquinas, for example, or Augustine. So, and to read Vedanta, you should read Shankara and other. My, my point is, and then reading list would include Plato. You can right. never miss him. So Plato, but all your Plato. reading list seems to be the classic authentic text. Uh, I mean, I mean, yes, scriptures and then major writings of major philosophers and daily a dose of poetry. So I mean, major oh. poets, major epics. Who are your favorites? Uh, huh? Who are your yes. favorites? Who or who are they? Who who are your favorites? Poets. Yeah, poets. Poets. I mean, it is very. No, no, your own, your own favorite. Ah, if you in 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 our, agar, if we say in Urdu, Ghalib and Iqbal. Ghalib and Iqbal. Okay, okay. Me, yeah. Mir, not towards Mir or Zawb or Dag. Huh? Mir Dag ki taraf na 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 Mir Dag. No, in fact, if you cannot understand Gali without understanding Mir. Wow, and wow. the dog is, of course, central. I mean, but if, if you have to pick up one or two, you have to name. Yeah. <laughs> so otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, there is a sin called originality in poetic tradition. Even in religious tradition, there is no originality. The old is gold. The truth has been said numerous times. Yeah. One can only set in a refreshingly new way. No one can mm. invent and one cannot invent a new truth. That's why classics are important. We can find ourselves wow. through tradition. That's so that precious. Is Heidegger, that is why Heidegger said, nothing great has ever been said outside tradition. Wow. So that's why tradition is so central. Tradition defines us the horizons of meaning in which we engage. So if we understand, if you have to Iqbal and to try to understand Iqbal, you cannot, if, if, you, if you do not read pre-Iqbalian poetry, that if you do not read Rumi, for example, 
Then the all-time favorite, you know, Rumi is for everyone. Hafiz. Hafiz is the most, I think, reading Hafiz, one finds the meaning of life. It, if one can, if, and if one fails to find the meaning of life, one cannot find it in any other point. <laughs> <laughs> and modern, for example, there is Holland and Rilke. <laughs> After modernity, we find some mystically oriented poets who sound more, who resonate more with certain sensibilities, especially some secular sensibility. They are Holland and Rilke. They should be read. Holland and Rilke. Holderlin. 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 And Rilke. Okay. These are German poets, German poets. That's about whom Heidegger wrote that is the task of a philosopher to explain a verse. So philosophers It's the task of philosophers to explain poetry. Allah, Allah, Allah. Uh, or in the words of Freud, he said, wherever I've been, I've, uh, he said, I've never, in his words, he said, I've never found myself somewhere except that a poet had preceded me. Allah, Allah, Allah. Uh, yes, so yes, that's, yes. Uh, well, it's been absolutely amazing, uh, Dr. Maruf. If people want to reach out to you and connect with you and, um, you know, maybe pick your brains or research or whatever it is, what is the best place to for people to reach out to you? Is it social media uh, yes. or is it, uh, it or should they go? Social media, and I, I, but I have, I have, I have one of my friends is maintaining a blog, Barufsha blogspot or blogspot.com. Okay. Most and, of my and, writings. And I'll share that on the YouTube. Newspapers, um, most of my writings are on academia.com or on this barufsha.blogspot.com. Mm -hmm. They are there and I am accessible through email. I would love to learn from my, anyone who is interested, I would love to learn from them because every dialogue is really God teaching us. Sure. We are not teaching us. God is teaching us through the other. So that is the essence of teaching in Islamic tradition. Wow. So, teaching by presence. So people, yes. if what I'll do is I'll share in the YouTube description as well, the Blogspot uh, address. And if you want to reach out... You can... if, yes, 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 you can share that. No issue. No. You can reach out there. Email. And if you want from there, you can get hold of Dr. Maruf's email and connect if you want to connect. Um, well, it's been absolutely amazing, Dr. Saab. I really appreciate you taking out the time. Um, thank you once again from the Behedilse, from my heart for taking. And I, I do hope to get you on again, inshallah, pick your brains on. There's been so many things we haven't discussed. There's just so much to discuss here. <laughs> thank you for inviting and hosting and all that. It is a pleasure. Right. Well, guys. Likewise, if uh, do uh, hit up, inshallah, Dr. Maruf's uh, blog page and check it out, have a read, do connect. He's a very good friend as well of Dr. Mir Faisal, who we've had on before from uh, Quantum Research in Canada. And do remember to check out, if you're into that stuff, do reach out to Dr. Mir Faisal as well. Amazing individual. I think Kashmir, Kashmir, I don't know what is it in the water or what is it? Intellectual geniuses everywhere. I'm like... Uh... Kashmir, Kashmir was called Sharda Peet or Saraswati. That's called the land of knowledge. Wow. Traditionally, it has been called... We hope we try to have some glimpses into that. We try to be true to that legacy. We we're very small people. We're not able to, but it has been... The, it is a traditional place. It is... That's why also Buddha said, if you want to find Nirvana, go to Kashmir. Allah, Allah, Allah. <laughs> there, there, the, because the argument of beauty... And address is best in Kashmir. Mm. The beauty of Kashmir makes you naturally more calm, more poised, more mystical. Kar, so you, kar jannat you are... baru e zameena stina, stina, stina. Yes, ah, yes, Kashmir. Yes. Uh, it was, it's been said by the Mughals, isn't it? That the, if there is paradise on earth, it is here, it is here, it is here. Yes. Right. Yes, well, yes, yes. once again, guys, much love. If you haven't already subscribed to my page, I'm going to put it up, my exit page. You'll see... Uh, YouTube, the regular social medias, uh, sites, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also Patreon, Sitos, Patreon, for those of you that want to subscribe on there, uh, you can show your love. And on YouTube, we're getting close to 20,000. So people spread the love, get it out there, click notifications. Dr. Saab, once again, I'm going to say a very big thank you. Shukran. Whosoever does not. Thank 
people does not truly thank God. So thank you once again for taking your time out. InshaAllah, wa barakallahu feek. Okay, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam.